All right, folks, welcome back. It is day 62 with Duolingo Chinese. Huangyi, Dajiao. So, delicious Mexican food, huh? Took some meds for your headache, which is clearly not sleep related. Oh, that's unfortunate. I hope your headache feels it's better. Blair. Jungwen, yes, Jungwen. How do we say let's go? Jayo. I think Jayo is probably the closest to let's go. For the sentiments for let's go. Uh, Jungwen, Jayo. <laughs> Right. <clears throat> Do you know one, but I, you forgot. Yeah, I think Jayo, uh, Jayo, is probably the closest. Like, let's do our best, or let's give it our all, or right on. Right. Uh, instead of literally saying "let's go," which is which is really funny. Like, how would you say literally "let's go"? Uh, Chiba. <laughs> uh woman <and> chiba <laughs> let's go i i guess you I, I don't know i i don't think i've ever heard that before woman chiba that that sounds really weird okay all right although i could see in a mixed like a a response to something chiba uh, let's go uh, okay, so let's review. We're, we're talking about hobbies. Actually, this unit is really short too. We've been getting a lot of oddly weird coincidental short units. There's one that literally translates to oil up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? So it deals with yo again. And use it to... No, jayo. It's jayo. Yeah, it's jayo. No, 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 you know, that, that is, yeah, yeah, it's Jayo, add oil. No, no, we're, we're thinking about the same thing. Yeah, it's add oil, Jayo, yeah. Um, as in, let's go, do your best, you got this, Gambate, uh, Gambate, yeah. It, it's, uh, Ja, Ja, I don't know how to, Yo, yeah. Jayo. Might be tone too. Jayo. Add oil. <laughs> Add oil. Add oil. Jayo. Ga iu. Ga iu. You got the you got the funny thing though. Oh, it's high tone, then then rising. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, wait. High tone? Do you mean one, 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 two? You're you're saying one, two, right? Which is uh, this? Or do you mean it's four, four, two? Ja yo, ja ja yo. No, no, no. That's that doesn't sound right. It's it's one, two. Yeah, it's one two, right? When you say rising, I guess you mean two. One two. Yeah, one two. Got it. Yeah. Yeah yo. Yeah, I say that a lot. Uh Gambate not as much yet. I'm not as comfortable just going up to someone and say Gambate. Right. Same same deal. Uh, my favorite English, if we're going to translate it to English, I, I say uh, that's the spirit, like an old fart. <laughs> this this is my patent patented boomer boomer adoption right here. This is the boomer boomer adoption. 
occasionally you'll probably hear me say that's the spirit <laughs> when someone's like oh yeah i just nailed you know i'm gonna i'm gonna climb mount everest i'm gonna that's the spirit it, it almost sounds like the way i say jayo that's the spirit we love when we have the spirit yeah if I had to link it with something, every time I say ganbate, ganbate, and jayo, it makes me feel like I'm saying that's the spirit. You know, just smack someone healthy, uh, healthy, healthy slap in the back. It's like, that's the spirit. You go get him. Oh, I say go get him too. Uh, go get him, tiger. <laughs> just, just go get him. Go get him is, uh, is one to go get them and also one last one which it's only if i know i'm talking to an american get her done uh get her done i i i don't say that too often i i well i only say that in very specific cases i i say it often but i say it in a very specific case get her done but go get them go get them is another one I don't think I have extra Chinese ones. Uh, Han Hao. Uh, Han Hao. Fei Cheng Hao. Fei Cheng Hao, maybe. Yeah, Fei, Fei Cheng. Fei Cheng Hao. Maybe. Like, very good. Very good. Excellent. Keep, keep it up. Fei Cheng. Fei Cheng Hao. Like, super, very good. That that's probably the other one that I would say. Fei Chang. Fei Chang Hao. Uh Jui Hao. Jui Hao works too. Jui Hao. Uh actually Jui Hao we, we got it in this channel. I mean not in this channel. In this unit. Jui Hao. Wishing you luck. How do you say Oh, is it like Tsu Tsu Ni Oh, to me, fa choy. Or I actually don't know how to say wishing you luck. Is it something like ju ni, ju ni guang ying, ju ni guang ying? Oh, oh, you mean in English? <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I I thought you were still on on Chinese. Yeah, yeah, you got this. Oh, you got this. I like that. I like you got this. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's do hobbies. I like those phrases. So when if Duolingo ever and any other people like teach, like say what their favorite phrases are, I tend to adopt those phrases. Those phrases are great. I, I've seen some saucy ones, some really particularly fun saucy ones. Like they want to make it happen phrases. I don't have a catchphrase. Uh, I think my only catchphrase is that stuck with most people it, uh, is um, so there's this thing, right? There's this great story, but, and I mean a big butt with three T's, right? That, that's my catchphrase. I, I think that's the only phrase that I would say that I I said consistently and it stuck. Big butt with three T's. Like, wait, 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 guys. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Hear me out here. There's a big butt coming. And I mean a butt with three T's. And then I go on. Like, that. That's I think that's the only thing that I would say it's probably something that you probably have not heard other people say. But it's a it's a language joke, Kate. It's a language joke. Big butt with three T's? It's an English language joke. Cause like a regular butt is this. And then a normal butt, that type of butt is this. But when you have a really big butt, you got three T's. You know? It's an English joke. 
I don't know if that's what res I don't know if that ever resonates with I don't know if that resonates with uh, language learners but it, it was originally meant to be an English joke because we have three butts you know three T's three T's each each butt has a new amount of T's <laughs> no it is supposed to be out of context it's a it's a meme I was trying to make myself into a meme because uh, people are into big butts, you know? I don't know. Oh. Oh, oh, you're gonna tell me something out of context. Okay, all right. Give me, give me. What, what, what's happening? All right, all right. Uh, tell me what's happening while I'm uh, going over hobbies. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Okay, so we had, oh, this is, uh, so we're going to use English today. It's only day one. So we're going to use English translation and I will probably recite them. So, Dianao, uh, Dianao, Dianao, we have Dianao, and a new word that I haven't ever heard in Mandarin, uh, where I haven't used it's a uh, Yoshi uh yeah Yoshi 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 yeah Yoshi Yoshi which is games or like Dianao Dianao Yoshi Yoshi one One, one, sorry, one, uh, ting, ting, ga, ga, tiao wu, tiao wu, you keep saying Yoshi and I'm just saying, I know, right? I know, right, Blair? Yesterday when I was doing the uh, Hanzu, uh, Hanzu section, I, I keep saying, like, man, they really like Yoshi. <laughs> but it's a... Uh, they're saying Yoshi. Yoshi. Um, instead of Yoshi. Yoshi. <clears throat> but it definitely constantly reminds me of... Yoshi! Uh, you know that sound that Yoshi makes? It's it's like a high pitch like Yoshi. <laughs> I'm doing the language from the land of the rising sun right now. Oh. Honestly, I don't even know how to express that in Japanese. The land of the rising sun. It does remind me of that too. Yeah, like Yoshi. Yoshi. Okay. Anyway. My favorite language, yeah. My favorite language. You know what my favorite language is? It's kind of a curveball. You know what my favorite language is? It's a curveball, so you gotta think outside the box. Not, not really. I, I, I'm gonna say the reason why I think. It's a language to me is that it's the one thing I can do well in person, no matter what language barrier there is, conventional language barrier, conventional language barrier. It's, it's also kind of a pun. It's a dad joke. Oh, English? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's body language. This is, uh, the basis of all my interest. Um, for most things. It's nonverbal. Nonverbal, nonverbal language. It's the thing that we don't do very often anymore. Yeah, body language. It's nonverbal communication. 
So seeing the person helps me identify a lot of things. It's the thing that you do with deductive reasoning. Yeah. It's like a boomer. It's basically a millennial thing at this point. If you put someone in front of me, you can accomplish a, a thing that you can't anymore. People are really undertrained in understanding body language and nonverbal communication. You know, when you see someone actually hear me out here, it's gotten harder. It's gotten way harder because now a lot of people don't know how to communicate with their body language. I'm further in Japanese than Korean. It makes me feel bad. Ah, you'll be okay, Blair. Go, go and uh, hang out with Korean every once in a while, you know? At this point, same. It's a little sad because I think Korean is cool. <laughs> I just got to get duo to get mad at you, you know? Anyways, uh, nowadays, it's actually really, really difficult to understand nonverbal communication because in my opinion, most people don't use nonverbal communication. Anymore. Like what I mean is they don't have points of reference anymore. It's not consistent anymore. It's kind of like English. <laughs> it's not consistent anymore. All right, anyways, uh, dance. So, uh, what else? Kan shu, kan, kan shu, shu, shu. Oh, I keep saying shu, sorry. Shu, kan shu. I'm thinking of Fujianese. She is Fujianese. Uh, kan, kan shu. And Shu. What other hobbies? I think that's about it. That's all we have access to. Then we have. Uh, Xi Huan. Xi Huan. I. I, 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 Bu I. I. And the phrase, Jui, uh, Jui. Uh, the most and uh I and I kind of get why they interpreted it as like the most or the favorites as a J as a J modifier so J and J I You can practice both with me if you like. Aww. I just feel like all the Korean fell off of a cliff and I can't read it now. It hurts my brain. Aww. Yeah, you guys can do it together. I feel like anyone under 16 now can't really communicate in general, honestly. Uh, yeah, for communication skills. Exactly. Uh, communication is not the same as a uh, language competence. In my opinion it can be one it can be overlap there's definitely a overlap between them if they choose but generally speaking uh, a language competence does not large it doesn't correlate very strongly um in fact knowledge competency does not correlate very well with communication skills um because miscommunication can happen even when a language is explicit miscommunication can happen like for example uh you could tell someone like i'm very happy and you have like this really really miserable look right there's this incredibly negative and it's like no no i'm really happy and and then you know you talk to someone else who might be more cognizant in like body language and all that stuff like are, are you are you sure it's like that's that's really confusing you, you look universally sad but you're telling me you're doing great there's a lot of dissonance between these things nowadays and i don't think that's going to mature more 
like what I mean is I've seen some incredibly disheartening things where someone was like they're like smiling like kids bouncing up and down smiling and they were saying like things I can't say on Twitch and things I can't say on YouTube like they, they're like they think it's a happy thing so they're like bouncing up and down like why are you like there's no concordance with that or, or someone being unable to express that they're upset without having to, like, if they can't, if they can't say that they're upset, they aren't able to express being upset in any other way. It's, it's really scary. Like, it's, it's very concerning. Um, it might not be maybe in the future, if that's the way they communicate. But the people who are older, right, like adults or like older people from different generations, to me, it's concerning because I have no way of communicating with them. Like what I mean is they could say one thing in a language in their competence, but I'm not convinced that's how they're expressing it. So there are things that I have to coordinate with. Like I sometimes someone says like, I'm living the time of my life and I haven't seen you smile once. Is that like a disconnect or something? Like I, I do know that there are people out there who are not very expressive, right? Like in their face and stuff, in their body language. But I think that's more not the norm. So it's it's really hard. When when I talk to, when I finally meet people in IRL, it's really hard to know. I'm even more concerned when things don't line up. That could be me. That could be like the boomer speech and whatnot. I managed to be able to type out, do you want to have dinner at six o'clock? Accurately in Japanese before I went to sleep. Whoa, that's nice. Very nice. Do you want to have dinner at six o'clock? Wow, you're that far along? Wait. You are really that... You, you, did you already learn Thai form? That's really far along. If you had the Thai form already. Or is it... Um, would you... Would you like... To have dinner... At 6 o'clock? Maybe. Oh, do you have? Oh, okay. Do you have? Okay, okay. Yeah, this is where Japanese gets a little weird. Or like what I mean is... um, Japanese is very specific. <laughs> um, what you call it? Uh, uh, wood? Wood? You should maybe like should we and like do you and want do you want oh no wait maybe yeah I don't know you'll probably know what I mean in the uh my my once you get there. It's weird. I feel like I wouldn't be able to communicate with anyone even barely younger than me if it wasn't for the fact that my little brother taught me most of today's brain rot stuff. Yeah. Nowadays, I think I've gotten a little bit of handle on it, but I, I really cannot. Uh. Bengohan. Oh, ban? Okay. Ban gohan wa ichi. Ichi. O tabe mash. O tabe mash. Bugging in things to see how it changed. So, dinner. Dinner. 
two o'clock. Eating. Uh, you ate at two. Wait, dinner. Something. Which is how I found Nakasan somehow translate into Mr. Membrane. I see. So I got a mask. Mask. Okay, let's see. So, have a mask. So, you eat. You eat dinner. I think, I guess you're trying to say you eat dinner at two. Uh, do you eat dinner at two? Do you eat dinner at two? So, yeah. Or, or yeah, do you eat dinner at two? Although... No, that works. Oh, oh, that's fine. At six o'clock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I understand. I understand. You were just picking a number. Yeah, awesome. Sorry, it takes me a while to read Domaji because I'm under practice. Domaji. I think that works. I think it's a little bit more reasonable if the direct object is near is uh, near the thing so but then it becomes oh yeah it's the same yeah so um say that dokuji right dokuji dokuji ni dokuji ni and then dokuji ni then ban gohan uh ban Bangohan O right Bangohan O uh Tabemaska Wow I haven't wrote Romaji in a long time. So at so this is uh six o'clock at six o'clock at six o'clock uh you eat dinner uh do you eat dinner so do you eat dinner? So this is the direct object. Whoa. Uh, oh. Oh. Is direct object. So you're eating the direct object. And then ka is the... That's fine. So doguji ni. At, at 6 o'clock. I don't know if it will still accept... If you put it here. I think it's still fine. Nick. I, I don't know. I think that might actually be fine if you pushed Okuji Okuji ni after oh that's what you're challenging me in thinking about um you do need a ni particle though um to say that it's at six o'clock other than that that's kind of neat I I don't know if that's grammatic, uh, I don't know what the jury's on. Uh, uh, like, the jury's out on that one. I, I don't have enough experience to know if you can move the time. Anyways, thanks for sharing. But it really challenges my understanding of Japanese. Okay, so like love, I think that's it. There really isn't much in this uh unit i feel like there's something else they did throw in uh ying yu ying yu describe like music and songs ying yu or shu ying yu shu
We'll see. I think that's it. There really isn't much of vocabulary. Uh, unit 14. What was unit 14? Oh, I missed one yesterday from unit 14. Uh, unit 14 is directions. So let's start. <clears throat> Bien, ah, uh, bien, bien, bien. Mia, right? Bien, Mia. And yo, so. Uh, I didn't double check on this character yesterday. We're just going to guess it's like this. Pang, Pang Bian, Pang Bian, Pang Bian. Oh me. Oh me. Uh tien uh tien me. Tien Might be getting these two mixed up, but we're gonna go with. No, that doesn't. Hang on. Oh no. Oh no. the other one maybe it was a box it couldn't have been a box could it this that kind of looks yeah maybe this that looks right yeah that looks fine go go and then let's combine the other two
，怎么九九？什么九？哦 ，That's a little, that's a little long there. Um, 学学校，学学校，学校。Say you. Common 的。Comment. And oh, not comment. Nimanda, Nimanda. Comment. Ah. No,、nah, I think that's good enough. I think we got all more, or there might be one, one or two. Let's look. I think we're short plus one plus two. That's fine. Let's look. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that's from yesterday. So let's see. Yo. In, in. Door. Tian, Tian, Peng. Actually, I gotta look at Peng again, cause. Oh no, Peng was correct. All right. Good. I'm not. I'm not going senile. Neat. Ah,、uh, Peng. Xiao. Yep, we're good. Lu, Lu. We're good on that too. Ah,、uh, Gao. Zhou, Zhuo. Ah,、uh, Zhou. Sorry, Zhou. Zhou. <laughs> I forgot Wang. Sorry, Wang. Okay, so we did forget one, Wang. I had it. Me and Che, these two. Yama, Yama. Oh, right. Oh, me. Amanda, Amanda. Oh, man. I guess position. Nah, right.、Like, uh, nah, Nadi. Nadi, Jerry, and Nadi. Okay, I forgot a few. Not the end of the world. Okay, um, I don't actually recognize these as well as I want to. So, Ian, no. Right, Ian, no. Li Huan, uh, Yo, Yo Shi, Yo Shi, Yo Shi. Don't give me Yo Shi vibes. Yo Shi. Don't do guys do it. Yo Shi, Wan, Run. So we got that. Oh, Ting, listen. Tao, the dance. Kan, kan shu, kan shu. Ge, xiang ge. Yingyi and I. 
and then Zui is missing. So Zui, uh, Zui, Zui. <clears throat> Zui is missing. You still love the word I? Well, I is I. I, 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 boo, I. Da, na, na, da, na, na. Oh, you like the I. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, here's, here's a, here's a notice. Did you notice that I has y'all in it? I wonder if there's a relationship between uh, I and this little thing. This character here is in a lot of, uh, liking liking or goodness or motherly motherly stuff this little cap and this down here is yo this one this is yo as in peng yo peng yo interesting That song, dude. I, I'm telling you, that song. That song. All right. He's reading books. Oh, we don't need pinyin anymore. Okay. He's reading. He's reading books. Wait. He's reading books. He's reading books. Oh, I forgot about this. I need to remember this. Uh, this is Jaroning. Uh, Jai, Jai plus ver verb. I need to remember this for uh next time. Uh, that's a grammar point. Jai, Jai Khan, Jai Khan Shu. You can write in traditional with a Windows simplified keyboard by just pressing Control. Yeah. Mhm. Mm you can do the same. Uh, by the way, Cat, since you're doing Japanese, you can also do the same. Or uh. For Japanese. So you like don't know the kanji. But if Duolingo taught you the hiragana. You can uh, cycle through to see what the kanji is. And after a while you'll probably get used to seeing the kanji. While you're cycling through. While you're typing. Like the more common. And in, in context too. So in context too. So um, in a way. If you don't ever want to write. Like if you don't want to handwrite anything. If you type a lot and then like type in prompts and stuff, you can probably get used to also picking up kanji that way. It's an interesting thought that I had across my mind. So I was going to try to use it in like a LLM kind of thing, like talk to chat GPT kind of way to see if I can create like a, like a extraction mining type of schedule, but that's not for another like four or five months down the road. So he is reading a book. I need to remember this. This is a grammar point. Or Jai. Yeah. Yeah, Jai. That's a grammar point. Uh You mean to teach myself kanji? Oh yeah, you can definitely teach yourself kanji, but but in a in a different way. In a different way. Don't worry. Plants. Plants. It'll be it'll be interesting. Ni xi huan kan shu ma? Ni 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 xi huan ni xi huan xi huan kan shu ma? Kan shu ma ma. I don't want, I'm not looking forward to writing a uh, Wu in Tiao Wu. Because I would have to count the number of strokes. Because you have to make a grid. Oh, I guess, yeah, yeah, you would have to make the first stroke. And you have to be one, two, three, four. And you slash across. And I think that's the top radical. 
And the bottom radical, it looks like I can't see it. No, I can't see it. I need I need to to see it large. <clears throat> Alright, can Oh, you're talking about can What do you mean? They they take can shoe. What do you mean they didn't pronounce the tone? Chu. No, it's it's fine. 你喜欢看书吗? Yeah, it's fine. 你喜欢看书吗? Yeah, it's fine. 我的学生不喜欢看书. But, but it does. It does do wonky things, though. Like, I, I'm not saying that might not be quite the example, but... Oh, you're used to hearing it in your Anki deck? I see. I see. Yeah, it's the right tone. I'm not sure if it's the... Like, uh... If it's, like, executed in a way that... I commonly hear, though. It's not natural sounding. It, it just sounds different. Uh, I say shu that way, too. So I, I don't know. I think I'm too used to, yeah. Like I'm you know, like I'm real life, so I say shu that way as well. <laughs> um actually who you need? I uh, actually you'll probably catch me saying shu instead. Shu instead shu Woman uh Woman Sh Shang Woman Shang my students imagine saying this my students do not like reading books imagine saying that what do you do what do you do when you have to say that to people I'm in die, chew fine. Chew fine. Chew fine. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in die. Chew fine. Chew fine. Chew fine. Um, oh, one thing I have to admit though, after watching like three body problem for a quite long time, um, the interesting thing about the difference between uh, Japanese and Chinese, we kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, because of the tonal nature of Chinese, it's a bit more dynamic, right? Like the range in pitch is a bit dynamic. And what I can say about the synthetic voice in Chinese, while there are a few places where the tone is actually just not the tone, right? It's just an in incredibly, it's a different tone entirely. Um, when you listen to this stuff, you can most definitely hear almost all this stuff in um so i know you said that you're used to like real life audio clips but from my perspective when you used to hear you used to you're a little bit more higher up that's fine that's a pitch preference but uh in a pitch preference uh, in a pitch preference on high, it depends on how high you go, right? Chu, chu, chu. Like, as long as it's lower than your baseline, right? The baseline would be your neutral. So, um, unless you know what the person's neutral state, neutral is, you, uh, you don't know how high they'll go. As long as it's higher than the neutral, right? Unfortunately, I think that sentence is too short to know where their neutral is because there's no neutral here oh wait men so if men was in it then you can probably find their neutral um uh, uh tone one yes it 
I agree, it tends to be higher. Uh, however, I don't, since you don't listen, you, like you haven't listened to them that long, you might not know where their neutral is. Their neutral is pretty low. Sometimes I almost think it's a uh, tone three at times. Um, <clears throat> however, I do want to say something uh, about uh, Duolingo synthetic voice. I think Duolingo synthetic voices perform, in my opinion, perform a bit. I'm going to say this very carefully, a bit better than the Japanese counterpart. Largely because the Japanese range and pitch. Yeah, I did get new glasses. I did. Um, Japanese, the pitch. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Um, the Japanese pitch is narrower. So it's, it, it gets even when you go to like a uh, native, I, I suppose just call it native content the subtlety is like a, a slight shift in the subtlety makes it really hard to listen to like transition from the synthetic voice here to there but in Chinese I actually thought when I was listening to three body problem maybe maybe it's because of my background in listening to Chinese but I actually thought there are some really it, it transitioned it translates pretty well. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is Kat, you think going from the other way around from Anki, Anki audio clips to Duolingo uh, makes it very hard to listen to. And I'm doing the other way where like my I, I guess a lot of my samples are coming from Duolingo. Meanwhile, when I go and watch Three Body Problem, it act, this whatever vocabulary that was captured in this actually is very resoundingly obvious when watching Three Body Problem. So I don't know. It, it's hard because I also grew up around Chinese, so that can help normalize things. However, the stuff that I'm hearing here um it's pretty clear what tones they are now in terms of pitch i can understand what you mean where uh shu shu the pitch is higher is probably um uh, at least that's like what you're like what i think i understand the pitch is higher like shu like shu like really high shu but uh <clears throat> i I um I can't say it that high either. Mine's like more like shu. Yeah, shu. And then uh a third like tone is like shu shu. So I can I typically go and then shu shu shu. That would be my neutral. Then shu 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 shu. And then shu. Um, is it because of my lack? My range is not as high, high pitched. Yeah, I totally get that though, because there's no form. You have no reference for pitch one. You have no reference for tone one. And in isolation, that's why I think um, lots of people comment on longer sentences, right? Longer sentences can also benefit tonality then you'll be able to pick up like a neutral a neutral sound so it normalizes the pitch it's a i i understand what you mean that one's a little interesting because uh, there's a natural uptone because of the uh, they probably normalized it to uh, it, it's a form of a question because <clears throat> that sounded more of an uptone like knee 
，你喜欢看什么书？哎，书，哎，书，哎，书，哎 ，there there's a slight slide, just a slight slide up. 你你喜欢看什么书 ？Slight slight slide up, which I don't know if I ever do. Um, in in uh, like when I'm asking a question. In in Chinese, I'm not I'm not sure if I do. I have to think about that. Ah,、uh, 你喜欢你喜欢看什么书 Uh, what do you like to eat? Oh no! Wait. Uh. Oh, what? Wait. Did not have this problem yesterday. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, save me. Oh, save save me. Oh,、uh, what books do you like to read? Oh my gosh. All right, all right. Let's focus. Ah.、Uh, Tama. Ah,、uh, Tamun. Ah,、uh, Tamun. Tamen, in. Ha, Tamen in. Eating. Eating. Eat. Oh, we're not going to go into it. But eat, eat. Maybe not high enough as well. If if I'm gonna say eat, eat. Yeah, go go might not be high enough as well for some of the voices. You you'll probably end up encountering that too. Uh, uh, the baseline is a little bit lower, for、um, some of them. For、uh, chu, actually, now that I think about it, probably for most of the one tones, you're probably. What, it makes me think, what kind of what kind of、um, audio clips are they? Are they all like super? Now I'm just expecting you to be listening to a bunch of Vocaloids. <laughs> Uh, Tamen, Tamen, die, chew fun. Like all I'm thinking. My child loves English songs. Oh yeah, no worries. No, 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 no. That that's fine. We're okay. I know what you mean. Like you don't need to show me to to understand. But I I think we're on the same page. Ah,、uh, this is probably something. This is probably the voice that would be fine. My child loves English songs. No, no. Go, go is not high enough for you either. That that's like quite low. My child loves English songs. Yeah, that's probably still too low for you. My child, my child, my child loves English songs. English songs, English, English songs.
Oh, this is a good example too, probably for you. Juan. Juan. Not high enough. Not high enough. Uh, it's not sustained enough, actually. Juan. Oh, which by the way, it's all tone ones. Um, any anything with tone ones, and then uh, the synthetic voice also has one one issues. So one into one. If there's two two one ones, it kind of trips out, and then also ones on e ones on e's so like uh t t c t c c any tone ones on these yeah so um they're they're slightly cut off Mo most of them are cut off uh for that matter yeah so uh the most prominent ones are t and chi uh she not not so much but you'll hear it in like lao lao shu oh sorry shu sorry shu you'll probably hear some in like lao shu uh lu shu uh she probably she yeah she like uh xie xi oh no that's wrong tone sorry that's i i'm trying to think of a she uh uh, qi zi. Qi zi. Actually, sometimes this is fine. Uh, qi zi. Qi zi comes out pretty, pretty okay. It's it's all the tone ones. Though. I I agree with you on that. The the funkiness is almost exclusively to the tone. Uh, first tone. One. There is slight R R issues too. Our, our issues, but R is just weird in general, you know, like nar, e dar, uh, nar, nar, jar. Yeah, R is like Beijing. Yeah, so, so that that that's understandable. That's understandable with synthetic voices if you're trying to get the R R sound. They did well, in my opinion, they did do well with the R sounds, though. Like, R, Roll. Uh, R and Roll so far are really great. I actually think it might be more consistent than some, some people who try to say it. R and Roll. Like, Roll Baozi. What? Speaking of that, what about the R? Well, Dang it. You pass by the two old Chinese folks neighbors who lived across from one another and the guy was telling the woman he would treat her to something and she said shit shit in the most cutest way possible. I literally smiled so much as I walked past him and resisted my urge. <laughs> that's actually really funny. No, that's pretty wholesome. Honestly, you kind of sound like a crazy cat cat person right now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's it's like um, you walk by two, two cats and you're resisting the urge to pet them. Like, mm. all right, just walk along. And when I was at the park, this couple passed by speaking Mandarin in an absolute Beijing accent. Possible I can start laughing. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah, Beijing accent. Raw. <laughs> yeah, raw. Like raw. Uh, raw is is gonna be rough for some people. I think. I I, I think the one that I struggle with the most, um, way back in the day, or not, not even like right now, um. 
like without like warming up if, if you don't warm up uh any uh wins any like w's but now not so much because we've been doing it a while uh now we've been doing it for a while like e yen right e yen or yen 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 right now now it's great because it's been like over six, 60 days of just constantly doing that. Um, so, yen, uh, yen, it used to be like UN, like you, you know, like a lot of the in English sometimes, yen, it's, it's less smooth, um, un until you like do it a couple, like months, <laughs> do it for a couple months and it's, it's great. Like Gung Yuan, right? Gung Yuan. Or like Duang, right? Duang. Hua, right? Hua. 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 And Hua, right? Woman. <clears throat> It's kind of, one thing I have to say is it's kind of a cheat when I kind of have this mental image of what there's what I want to sound like in my head and as I'm practicing I'm trying to get to that mental image of what I think I want to sound like and then when it matches and it clicks then I have this uh, confirmation that oh yeah I practiced and got to it as opposed to like in Japanese, I'm like, I oh, don't know. I'm just trying my best. Like I have no point of reference other than collectively constantly hearing different people with different accents and different like ranges and, and whatnot. And the subtlety is so subtle that a, a person with a different range might throw my uh, meter off everywhere. I'm like that too. I want my Chinese to sound like this Taiwanese streamer I know. I love the Taiwanese and Fujinese accents, so I'm not for that. So I am for that specifically. I see. It's interesting. Can you pick up the Fujinese accent? Uh, occasionally, I, I slip. Uh, I slip occasionally, but I, I don't think it kind of like ruins the... I, I don't think it ruins the meaning or anything like that. Like dai da, uh, dai da <laughs> is, is something. Uh, well, okay. What the? Okay. What the? Haizu, haizu, ai yuan ge ge. I I don't actually know if ge stays the same. Um, in Fujianese. Chuang. Chong, Chonger, uh, Chonga, no, Chong, Ingo, no, Ingo is, Ingo is, uh, music. <laughs> it's also, I'm happy I can recognize different accents. Oh, okay. That one is the accent is very distinct in particular. Yeah, yeah, it is quite distinctive. Um, where I live, the Asian marks, the Asian marks are typically run by Taiwanese. And, uh, occasionally, there's enough slight overlap. There's enough slight overlap that my parents would ask the owners if they're Fujinese. So then, you know, they converse in, in a way that is kind of like very samey, but very distinctively different. And then they usually default to Mandarin when, when they're talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fujianese is definitely heavily, um, I think it's very noticeably inspired by Cantonese. And then Cantonese inspired, like Cantonese is like kind of the bridging element between Taiwanese and Fujianese. The, the thing is still though, unfortunately, uh, I met a few Fujianese, uh, I mean Taiwanese people and it's still largely unintelligible, and that's understandable. 
My parents that uh, usually default to Mandarin when talking to Taiwanese. Yeah, you want to sound like that accent? I see. I'll have to listen more closely to Taiwanese people. Uh, like Taiwanese accent. I know what the man. I know what the Fujianese accent sounds like because my parents, they they have to speak in Mandarin. Um. Uh, pretty often when we have like social gatherings. Woman, uh, woman, hide Uh, woman, hide I in you go. I'm not used to the tone one. I I don't think I. How often does Fujonese use tone one? I actually don't think tone one is all that. Listen for that. Yeah, that creaky noise. You you seem to be hyper focused on the creaky noise. Um, e even when, uh, possibly it's not a, it's, it's just a person's voice creaking, <laughs> possibly, <laughs> but, um, what you call it? I think a lot of times in Fujonese, they don't do the tone one. They don't do the tone one as much as, uh, Mandarin. And it's the most uncomfortable tone that I have. You even see some bit, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, vocal fry. They they drop to a point where there's vocal fry in their uh in their voice. All right, do do you tell me that you have like a like a fa you fancy creaky creaky low voice? No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Ah, uh, okay. Keep on. Let's see. Uh. One. Mandarin teachers created a collab video where they created a comparison between mainland. And I might have seen it. <laughs> I might have seen that actually. Possibly. I've seen ones where they also, uh, there were the one, the series where they're side by side doing Cantonese and a dialect instead of a Mandarin, instead of Mandarin, a Cantonese, a person, and then a dialect. You Mandarin, you interesting. Jia. Jia. Yo. Okay, there are some tone ones. I can think of one like eating, eating, e. E is still very, very pronouncedly one, uh, tone one. I, I'm thinking I'm like having a conversation with myself in Fujianese right now I'm trying to pick up it, the, the tone ones like how, how often does tone one come up it, it's it's hard to know if it's neutral or tone one okay why why minanya can call toichi Hmm. I'll have to think more about your your observations and your thoughts. Woman. A woman hides a woman hides a Si 
They keep adding the when I omit the naturally. I keep omitting the from personal relations, but but they they want the in it. Although they'll accept it though. They'll accept it like this. Woman, woman, hai Actually, maybe they might not accept that one. Woman, the hai zi. The hai zi. Xi huan kan ying yu shu. They'll send me a. We can chat about it later. Yeah, yeah, sure. Very <coughs> long. Shu. Mao. Shu What the what the what the shishan who who she she this is a such a stock expression. Nijai Joel Shama. Get more with Super Duolingo. Not right now, Duolingo. Uh, you you got if there's a phrase, Nijai Joel Shama is a that that is stock. You you have to have that in your back pocket. Next to Wabuchidao. <laughs> Uh, 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 the uh, the reason why I laugh about this question is I don't usually ask this question, but younger people these days like to ask questions like these, like super direct questions like the, like these. And I don't know if they're memeing me or if it's a natural way to start a conversation, but it, this reminds me of it. Uh, like who do you like the most I'm like uh that's hard to answer <laughs> that's a that's a loaded question like what is your favorite music of all time can can you help me out with some details it's like is this the best game you've ever played <laughs> it's hard to answer <laughs> It's like, what is your favorite book of all time? Uh, yeah, you know that that kind of thing. As opposed to something like uh, phrasing like, "What are you currently currently interested in?" Maybe. Oh, I just ended the question in a preposition, L like the way Japanese <laughs> tends to translate. But like, what are you currently interested in? What have you been doing recently? That that's kind of thing, right? What are you, you know, um, what have been on your mind lately? That kind of thing, as opposed to what is your favorite thing of all time? I'm like, well, well hmm, that's a good question. 
is is this like among the top three experiences you've ever had well um let me think about it for a moment <laughs> isn't this the best thing ever uh yep who do you like the most uh, I obviously still stay at a tone one. But Yeah, like sometimes uh shu shu ends up sounding like tone four. Shu like shu. Like it's very close to shu sometimes if you're if you're not listening carefully on them because it's so short and it some have a volume runoff at the end with if it uh, if a sentence ends at a tone one there it might be, be there is a chance it might be like normalizing to a downtone to a downtone as a natural like ender Thank you. It's not just me who can hear like tone four. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a natural ender, right? In, and I don't know if it's because maybe when they're training, the volume trails off. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can hear it all the time. It's just I don't like it. It's high long enough. It's high long enough, but. Uh, there might be a reason for that. There might be trail offs because um, in English, you or in lots of speech, when you're ending a sentence, you kind of trail off a, a little bit. And um, if a tone one, if the voice, if the synthetic voice has a tone one at the end, kind of like just trails off a little bit. So it feels like it's dropping off into a tone four. And I can understand that. It, it, I noticed this quite, quite in many of the things, so it's understandable. Yeah. So you don't really have like. I think we're on the same page. We're on the same page. Yeah. I keep like the duh, like Tom and Gurga, Tom and the Gurga, 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 Yoshi is like the newest newest of words of all time so far. Yeah, Yoshi is all around new. Like so that that's kind of cool. Because uh, it's it's actually a word that I have not heard before. And it's an interesting combination too. Yo and Xi. Yo Xi. Yo Xi. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Mario. Tom and the. Tom and the Gurga. Tom and the Gurga. Uh, Gurga. Mei Tian. Mei Tian Xiao. Mei Tian Xiao. Oh, I guess we can put that then. One, one, dinner, 
女朋友最最漂亮。You should add me on Duo later. Okay, okay, I will add you. Girlfriend is the most. My girlfriend is the most beautiful. 最漂亮，最非常漂亮。<laughs> Just throw throw it in more, you know. Uh, 最 you know, uh, 最非常很漂亮，最最最漂亮。Oh, 很很很很漂亮 ，Yeah, yeah, 很很 ，Yeah, I I do that too. I do the repeating, the 很很 for sure, 很很 And then when I want to like emphasize things like uh like 非常非常少 right 非非常非常少。I just go, uh, 一一一 like 一一点啊 like 一点点 or 点点。<laughs> just just repeat repeat to to like emphasize is increase the intense intensity by repetition. Very very common. Like not 一点一点快一点点快。<laughs> Uh, 我我们我们、uh, 女朋友，呃、uh, ，我的我的女朋友女朋友最漂亮女朋友。Yeah, 一点点点点点。You gotta add more dance in it. Ah,、uh, 有 Let's see, where is 有 Where are you? 有，有，呃，电脑，电脑，呃、uh, ，in case you're wondering， 呃、uh, ，if you're ever curious， 嗯、um, ，if you want to pick up someone's like slightly Fujianese accent， it's whenever you get 鸟，鸟，呃 ，I've just noticed that in every instance of like 拿 or anything with an N， it ends up being a 鸟。So dn, uh, dn, dn, dn is the so dn is still the same, right? Dn, uh, dn, but dn. So there is a chance every once in a while I might say dn instead of dn, and like, uh, that that happens a lot. All all the n's become like ng's to some extent, and you'll probably hear this in Japanese too. Actually,、uh, the synthetic voice. Two, I think, two of the synthetic voices in in the Japanese chorus has nyals instead of nas.、Uh, oh, and、uh, but instead of、uh, gas, like this, g's. Their g's become nyals from time. So if a ga becomes a nya, a nya. Which、uh, it, that's in Fujianese too. Lots of nyas everywhere. So notice the way you say "hun" is a little accented. Yeah, yeah, "hun," yeah, yep. I don't think we have a "hun." Yeah, no "huns" in Fujianese, or at least the "huns" is different. I I use something else in place of "hun," "hun." Uh, hun. Um, what is it? Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> We I use yeah. So like handa, ya doi. A doi is um big, but if it was da, it would be ya da. Ya da, ya ya doi. So ya 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 doi. Ya no, ya instead of like hun, so it, it's not even close. So they're like hun, hun. I don't know, it, it, hun, hun takes a little getting used to. Yeah, it's not even close.、Uh,
Um, and and you get like I, I don't know how they get from Xiao or Xiao Xiao to Nong 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 is small. <laughs> But it still has the little uh, the no, no, the the ng, lots of ngs. Do you know, do you know. I'm not sure. I I'm, I'm not sure. I should ask my uh parents if there's a shao. Like I don't know how to pronounce it any other way. I I'm actually curious if I even have sha. I don't even think there are shahs here. Like this this syllable. I can't think of one. Like no sha sh like the sh right when you have your tongue on the bottom of your mouth this thing sh sh like this this stuff like she 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 is one of the things that I can't say very well without a lot of practice and recently because of doing this but uh, this is fine um it comes off as more like sisu if you wanted to use like uh, this type of sound it's it's closer to sisu uh, but just for the record um um seria uh seria seria is thank you seria is thank you. Seria. And so, she, she. Um, like, most of these sounds are gone. Like, I, I, like, xiang, right? Uh, xiang, han, like, xiang as in, like, fresh. Han xiang, right? Han xiang. Um, is, yeah, yeah, xin, yeah, xin. Yeah, Shin. Like, it, it becomes an S. Like, it, it's more, it starts becoming S's as opposed to Shi. So there's no Shi. That's why it becomes more like Shi Shi. Uh, like, Shi Shi. Like, if it has a Mandarin counterpart, it'd be more like Shi Shi as opposed to, but I, I would say it's more like Su Su. Su Su. As opposed to this sound, whatever this sound is, it, it's like a shape that it's probably the most common one, one of the more common Mandarin things, and it feels weird to me. So I have to practice it quite a bit. Yeah. Dianao. Dianao. Hey, I've discovered so many interesting things lately, and it's kind of. I look forward to seeing what else I can fill out. One. One. Nope, nothing with one. Oh man. One? I don't know if there's a counterpart because the only word I can think of is Kariu. Kariu is to play, but I think Wang is a, a different meaning than Kariu. Here, I'll, I'll try some. Yo. Oh, I don't have a yo equivalent though. A, a yo, yoshi, a yoshi, yoshi. No yoshi equivalent at the moment. One. Kariu. Play. Um, kaishi. Or. Yeah. Uh, I said start. Kaishi. That's more like start. Shuang. Uh, why shuang? Maybe no. Shuang is more like yo. Yo. Shuang. Oh my gosh. No, like some of these don't translate at all. So it's fine. And this is a typo, by the way. I don't know if you've already uh, encountered Hui's typo. There's a Hui typo in, in the lesson. <clears throat> the, the tone marker is on the wrong. No, tone marker is not on. Like it's on the wrong character. Not that pinyin is a deal breaker, but go. Juan. Juan. Si. 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 
I kind of like the she feeling. Da. Uh. Ni bang you. Uh, ni ni bang you. Ni ni bang you is ni pang you. Ni bang you. Ni pang you. Ni pang you. Ah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hoa. Or, yeah, hoa or. Jian like a Cantonese ho jian or ho ho is it ho jian hen jian jian I don't remember how it goes I need to hear the Cantonese again but it, it's a different word for beautiful but yeah ho wang ho wang is uh beautiful at least that's how I go with it. What? Uh, what the, uh, what the, ni pang yo, ni pang yo, ni pang yo, zui piao liang, oh, zai, zai, zui, piao liang, ngoi li, ngoi li, uh, ngoi li, uh, ngoi li, ni, you have to switch too often. <laughs> Uh, why do you bang you? Uh, why do you, why do you bang you? Um, why do you bang you? Yahoa, Yahoa. Why do you bang you? Yahoa. Oh, yeah, why, why, like, were? Oh, yeah, dude, were, were, uh, these o's and stuff become like a uh, whiny you have to add some wine to it why why so it becomes like this uh maybe like this why as opposed to were okay sha yeah. Yeah, I just don't have a sha. No, no, no sha. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. No, tomorrow doesn't work. Because tomorrow's Ming. Tomorrow's Ming. Sha Wu. Man. Oh no, I, I don't have no idea how to express it. Shawu. What the heck? One. Yo. One. She. Uh. Niman. Uh, Niman. Niman. One bu one. Dinao, Dinao, Yoshi, ma, Yoshi, ma, Nima, Nima, one, who won, who won, Dinao, Yoshi. Oh, just kidding. I'm already asking a question. You don't need the redundant ma. Dinao. <laughs> uh, Jung Wu. I don't want to say what I was thinking of. Jungwu. Xi Huan. Arzi. Uh. Fei Chang. Nida. No, Tada. Tada Mama. Mana. Mama. I. Oh. Zui I. Oh, why did they add it at the end? Zui I. Uh, J.I. In Yu, In Yu Shu. A kind In Yu Shu. Ta. Chu. Oh, man. Oh. And she. No, that's fine. No, 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 that's fine. Ta. I'm thinking so much, right? About. 
comparing and contrasting right now. Uh, common. I'm really curious how many uh, Chinese people uh, watch like Ameri like uh, American outlet things about Chinese. Like what I mean is I I've met maybe two or three other people, but they clearly are also people who know. I, I met one person that strictly probably prefers to uh, speak in Chinese, but I am curious how often that happens. I really want to meet other people who have like similar accents or have like delved into accents and stuff or have very high exposure to accents. The closest thing I can probably think of is meeting a Singaporean or something. I've already met, actually, by coincidence, one of my co-workers was a Singaporean. Ah, oh, I didn't know Mandarin back then, though. Like, I couldn't, I wouldn't openly speak Mandarin back then. Actually, two of my co-workers happened to be, one was Singaporean, one was Chinese. Um, miss opportunities, I tell you. Not enough time. Couldn't juggle a scientific career while doing a while doing language learning. That's for sure. That's kind of one of my uh, excuses, I guess. I'll call it an excuse because if I really wanted to learn Mandarin, I probably would try to make time for it. Back in my day, I was like married to science, so uh, science required the utmost diligence. Exchanging one passion for another, I suppose. Uh, Tom and Tom and Mama. Wait, Tom and Mama. 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 Jui Xi Huan. Jui. Where the heck? The heck? Jui. Jui. Oh, Jui. I. I can. I can. English. Tama. Uh, Tom and Tom and Gogo. Gogo. Go go one. One? Oh. May Tian May Tian Shang Wu Shang Wu In Shang Wu May Tian Shang Wu Wan Dinao Yo Yoshi Dinao Yoshi Yoshi Da Tamin Tamin the Ah Wait. I'm in the Gogo Meitian. Oh, wrong day, time of day. Wrong time of day. <laughs> wrong time of day. I just picked any time of day. I wasn't even reading. I'm like, whatever. Just, just put in a time of day. It was, it was a uh, Shawu, not Shang Shangwu. It was not in the morning. It was in the afternoon. Like whatever, just just put in the day. Tama. Uh, Tama and uh, Tama and Xihuan. Whoa. Oh, that's a way to interpret it. Xihuan. Tama and uh, Xihuan. Bu Xihuan. 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 Uh, Wan. Uh, Wan. Yoshi. 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 Wan Yoshi. Got to think. Yoshi. Yoshi. I got it. Uh, honestly, if I had to say it in Fujianese, it probably just literally sounds like Yoshi. <laughs> Instead of saying Yoshi, 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 probably Yoshi. It, it, it's actually kind of far from Yoshi. Yeah, Yoshi. That's a Yoshi being talked about today. I know, right? I mean, Yoshi is really cute. All right. Cutest not dinosaur in gaming, man. Not dinosaur. Although, I don't know if you watch a Super Mario Brothers movie, like that live action one, uh, Yoshi was a raptor. 
Are you subliminally trying to get me to listen to Yoshi's story? Oh, oh yeah, yo, yo, dude. Yoshi's story, though. Yoshi's story. Tama. Uh, Tama and Goga. Tama and the. Da. Go -go. Go -go. What is it? Meitian. Xiaowu. Meitian. Xiaowu. 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 Wan. Deno. Deno. Yoshi. Deno. Yoshi. Oh no, it's after midnight. Ta bu hui tiao wu. Ta bu hui tiao wu. Ta. We gotta book it. Ta bu hui tiao wu. I'm already behind. My friends all like to dance. My friends all. Oh, my friends all like to dance. Okay. All of my friends like dancing. It, this is a grammar point. It's it's you could interpret it like to me. I could interpret it as both my friends or all of my friends. It's it's either. But oftentimes when I think of someone's friends, I don't usually think of all the friends. I just think of the friends they might be referring to. So I I often imagine a person. Oh, they're talking about maybe more than one friend, not all their friends. Most of the time, I default to some of their friends like dancing. As opposed to all of their friends, when they say "do," uh, "do," but it, it's fair. All my friends like woman, woman. Uh, 我的, 我的朋友, 我的朋友都, uh, 都喜欢跳舞. 你会唱英语歌吗? 你, 你会, 你, 你会唱, I usually read do as many. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Like many, but not all. Most of the time. Unless it's contextually very specific that they emphasize that it is every one of them. Because oftentimes you don't know for sure. And it's very difficult to know if it's all of them. Um, I don't like gravitating towards extremes. But the word does, that word does mean all of, like, can mean all of that. All like some, both. It, it goes up to max, right? Uh, however, by default, when I'm thinking and no context and stuff, it's usually like many, like not not all, but quite a lot of them or more than one. Anything between zero and all, but not all yet, until someone goes out of the way and say, "Yeah, like everyone, really, truly." Like really, everyone, every one of your friends. Unless they just tell you, "Oh, I only have one friend." Rip. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Having one or two friends is perfectly normal. Maybe for a forty-plus-year-old, like my, you know, like I, I'm getting up there in age. So, although I still, I like to say conservatively, I have more, more than two friends. So. 你会唱英语歌吗? 你会,你会唱,你会唱,唱, I, when I talk about friends, I feel like, um, I want people to have more friends. And, and, and at the same time, all I can ever think about is all the times that people joke and meme about, what do you, what is this friends you're talking about? People actually have friends these days? I'm like, oh, that's, it's kind of funny. Like people, I know people are saying it in a funny way, but also there's some sadness in the idea that it's being used as humor. That is kind of you though, not gonna lie. Yeah, that that's what I mean. Like in a way it's kind of funny and relatable, but at the same time, it, it kind of, it's a little bittersweet for me. Like I, I don't, I don't want it to be funny because it's kind of true. Like, to some extent. The re the thing about humor, oftentimes, especially things like that, is it's more people accepting something that's kind of true. And then that's what makes it a little bit more emotionally impactful. And at the same time, say, I don't want to, I don't want to think that's kind of fun anymore. I actually kind of want to think of it as funny as in it's ridiculous funny. You know what I mean? Like, 
nah, nah, everyone has lots of friends. That That's kind of what my thought is. It, it used to be kind of like that. It used to be kind of like that. Where like, wait, you guys don't have like 12 friends? Well, you better go make new friends. That kind of thing. That used to be, that's what that joke used to be like. Um, now it's like, uh, what do you mean these friends? Ha ha ha. And then you're like, I, I feel like it, it's kind of a deep cut humor. It's kind of, it's starting to become more of a dark humor. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, like it's becoming more of a dark humor. Yeah. Like people are using that meme and it's more of a dark humor. It's no longer the lighthearted thing like, oh, everyone has friends. So it's funny when you say that. But friends? What do you mean by friends? And then meanwhile, you know, most of the people in the room will think it's funny because it's ironic funny. Right? It's a it used to be a point of oh that th those are the two. So it's going from ironically funny to unironically dark humor funny and uh i i mean i'm not ashamed you know i'm not like a i just said i'm not ashamed i'm i'm not like a sunshine and rainbows kind of guy for everything but generally speaking it's very reflexive of the changing times and the jokes continue, by the way. When you have a conversation about friends, then the following joke is, uh, you know, do, do uh, my virtual gotcha collection of waifus count or something? And then someone would like throw another jab out and say like, well, your body pillow definitely doesn't count. That like, you, you know what I mean? Like the joke has spawned into lots and lots of almost unironic dark humor. Like, it's a very common thing um, when I sit around and hear younger people talk about it. I especially younger people. I can definitely understand if it's like a 40-year-old or a 50-year-old who's like, oh, yeah, I have one really good friend. Or I have two really good friends. Or I have one best friend in my entire life, and that's the person they're married to. That's a different story. But kids nowadays, that is the running joke. In fact, they almost make it a competition to com compare and stereotype very real situations. Like, oh, hey, does my friend list on my Fortnite's account count, right? Or, or something like that. Like, ah, oh, man. Be friends with each other. If that's possible. I sound like a sap, but please go make friends. Or, I, the internet doesn't really help with that, does it? Um, I think there is a future, though. I, I'm, you know, I'm a very positive, I'm quite positive about this when something really critical hits a big enough group, there are ref reform to be done. But I think the internet's heavy reliance on parasocial relationships is kind of putting a damper on the commitment and the insecurities that prevent people from trying to make friends. Because why make friends when you can form a parasocial relationship with someone and that person can't get angry at you for messing up, can't get angry at you when you're in your lows, they can't get angry at you when you're in the highs, and they're always going to be there when you want them parasocially. Instead of, you know, the fear of heartbreak the fear of it, it's more like the fear of heartbreak or the fear of drifting apart or the fear of having arguments and debate that overshadows all the beauty and the wonderfulness that you can get from having a social relationship with or two or three like good friends the the other end of the thing is like super overpowering like, it's almost to the point it drains and saps the energy out of everyone. They only see energy lost as opposed to be an energy gain. Like, I, I'm still guilty of that, right? 
However, I'm also quite old now. Um, if I had to start a weight loss journey or something, or a fitness journey, man, a friend? Oh, that's like a second battery. Uh, that's a second battery right there. Like, if your friend's down, you're up, let's go. Right? Jayo. Right? If you're down today and your friend's ready to go, Jayo. But that luxury, it, it's almost a luxury now. And it's kind of, it kind of saddens me. It, even though I make like jokes about, I, I think about friends and stuff. Back, back in the day, friends was so common. Like the word friends was thrown around so commonly. <clears throat> it actually carried less weight. Now, I feel like the word friends is so rarely used in an earnest way that the moment you use a friend, the word friend, it almost is like watching a Korean drama, a K-drama or a Japanese or like a Japanese uh, slice of life show. Like the, the word friend becomes like monumental. It's like, oh yeah, I finally made a friend today. It only took 30 years of my life and it'll take me another 30 years to to like possibly even marry this friend or something like that. You, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of how it feels right now. All work, no social activity. And even hobbies become more of a work bound thing than having time to invest in others. So weird. Times have changed. You and I don't want to go in too deep about this, but it also has a lot to do with idolized personalities. Um, content creators always put their best forward because that's what draws the views, right? But it also war creates a warped perspective of what it's like to interact with a person. Because the parasocial relationships you form with your personalities and content creators, they're at their best. They're at their most advertisable. They're at their peak, right? Like all the stuff that they print out and stuff. Like for me, I tell people I'm not always this high energy. When I stream, I'm high energy because I'm ready to be high energy. When I'm off, like most of the time is I'm sleeping. Like, oh, uh, unless you have some weird thing about being friends with someone who's sleeping, who contributes nothing, then that's a pretty terrible friend, right? So, um, that's kind of the perspective that some people think now, like even kids, like, oh yeah, my friends don't really care about me because they also have their own social lives and they can only hang out like two hours a day or something. And that sounds like perfectly normal activity for best friends like I, I barely have chances to hang out with my best friends but we're still best friends right so there's a really really reasonable ex explainer to a lot of the behavior that makes making friends very very difficult why make a friend when you have chat GPT available to you at all times why make a friend when your doom scroll is so conveniently engaging every single second of your life when you're doom scrolling because when you go to when you go to a friend sometimes you don't have anything to talk about sometimes you don't even connect sometimes you have an argument it's rough because i've been like that forever i'm sorry to hear maybe maybe times would you i i think it's my only empath my empathy or my attempt to sympathize with people um, in the younger generation is that it is, yeah, very messy. Interacting with another human being directly is incredibly messy. And everything else just feels so much more consistent compared to it, right? Um, you always see your favorite personalities at their best. And whenever you want to see them, you can you can see them like you know in, in vicariously if you go to meet these people they're going to be a mixed bag they're going to maybe be too busy to interact with you and all that stuff and it's really rough to expect that when you think of friends that you have to picture something 
better than your content creators, better than your TikTok feeds. That is so hard. A friend does pretty much a lot of things a person cannot see. A friend is invisible until you are until they're needed, right? So if they don't need to entertain you, then your their competition is TikTok. Their competition is YouTube. Um, while but there's things you don't often think about. Your friend is something that will do something for you, and you have no idea that they were thinking about doing it for you, right? A TikToker or like your favorite personality on YouTube cannot do these things. They cannot one day just say like, "Hey, you know, I've been thinking about you." So, um, hey, do you want to like just go to the park and then grab some ice cream cones today? Like, it's kind of hot out. Hey, hey, do you want like? There's no serendipity. It's consistency, and that consistency is really comforting. The human condition states, in my opinion, that when you're really consistent, something that provides consistent feedback is super safe. You're always in your comfort zone. When you have a friend, it can be the wild, wild west, right? A friend could be busy one day. A friend, like, with that, also comes. Unexpected positive things. Your friend could get you a gift, and you didn't even ask for one, right? A friend could see you're in trouble, or you're being, you know, you're being down or something without you even having to tell them. You can't do that necessarily yet. Yet, maybe a robotic assistant who tracks your entire daily life, perhaps a learning AI would be the next. Closest thing, but for now, I would rest a lot safer or or a lot less hysteria and mania if I knew if if I had the assurance that those people who I talk to, who might be incredibly caring and brilliant, also have a like a support system with friends. Because ultimately, I think the biggest difference, one of the underlying causes for like. Negativity and projection and hatefulness and looking to express negative, hateful things often also comes at probably a situation in which there's less social connections with other people. Maybe even having a network of people who care about them and stimulate them in a way that is very positive. So, I I would say they're intertwined. When you find someone who's aggressively negative and direct towards you with a lack of compassion and maybe even poor communication skills, but incredibly intelligent, you start to wonder how much social interactions with other human beings that they have. A bookworm does not make an elegant speaker. A bookworm does not lead to many friends made. Right? That's kind of the really unfortunate. Reality sometimes, especially digital age. Lots of information, less social connections. I feel like these past four days or since I met you and your DC, DC community is some of the most social interactions you have all year. No joke. Well, let's work on that, right? Let's build it. You know, even though it's online and whatnot, you can still. I'm not saying the online itself will prevent people from having social interactions. It's the parasocial relationship. Oh, like you can still have a parasocial relationship with like your professor, for example. For real though, like your professor, you might go into a class and never interact with your professor. They're they're like back in my day, the <laughs> back in my day, you know. Prior to the internet, right? When you step into class, you could be that person who is socially isolated and never interact with like your teacher, your mentor. Like you basically distance yourself, right? That is effectively like a parasocial relationship. Only that one is more of one of indifference. At least you don't see your professor do something or some. That's even less. That's like socially isolated children. And 
socially isolated children often in my opinion as someone who maybe like to be in psychology every once in a while those are at risk at risk people when you see a young young kid like incredibly socially isolated you start to worry because it's a really gigantic red flag i was one of those i'm only saying this from experience i was one of those socially isolated and the only the silver lining is i got thrown in with all the other socially isolated kids and they all happen to be very high achieving kids and that stuff is called a gifted program back then so <clears throat> socially isolation social isolation can be um, presented in many different ways you can be gifted you can just be a rebel riser you know either way it's often dealing in my opinion it's dealing with a social network right a social network I, or the their lack of a social network yeah it, it suddenly got so uh zappy but i i actually think you're never uh here's we're gonna leave it on like a more positive note it's never too late i don't think uh, some people, this is a contentious point, but I don't think there is a time when someone is too old and too stuck in their ways from a lack of social interactions and like a support system that they can't uh, change the direction of their uh, social interactions. Like, you know, like, oh, this person's too old. They're way far gone to re-socialize or something like that i i try not to believe in that. some people may argue that's not the case you can have such social deficiencies that it would take more than a lifetime to recover i don't i don't prescribe to that that sounds very uh, fatalistic it sounds too predeterministic it's like people who believe that they can't learn a new language or being too old to learn a new language that kind of thing not not in my not in my no not not in my uh perspective or try i try not to uh where's chang where are you Ni ai bu ai 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 bu ai sai. Ni ai bu ai. Ni ai bu ai a tiao wu. I can ai bu ai. Ah. Maybe I should learn how to sing that song. I should I should look at the lyrics. Ni ai bu ai. Ni ai bu ai tiao wu ma. Or Oh, I don't need ma. Just kidding. 我喜欢听歌, 不会唱歌. 我, 我喜欢... 我? 我喜欢... 喜欢... Uh, 听歌... 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 Uh, 不, 不会... 不会... 不会唱歌... 唱歌... 我每天听歌... You are who you... Surround yourself with them. Yes. And the people that surround you are also a projection of you too. Um, so like it's all almost it's a feedback loop. What you are able to express and project also creates the people who originally surrounds you. And then the people who are around you also feeds back on you. So if you look around and you find that you don't understand why everyone is so aggressive and flaky. You might be wondering if you're projecting that or there's a self-selection for that. Like there, there's always an interplay between the people around you and the um, people you attract, right? So my friends, for better or for worse, um, my fr my best friends and I have gone through a period where we've all been in a situation where 
um, we get we stretch ourselves thin and we neglect our own self. Um, so it, it's very clear. Like th this stuff does it, it, not even in a sense of negativity, in the sense of like personalities and stuff. If you are projecting properly and expressive properly at any time, that's usually a way to attract people of similar things. And then if you were born into, like if you walked into and serendipitously encounter friends and they stick around with you, then those people become a reflection. Like they end up influencing you and the people around. It, it sounds like it's so obvious at the same time. We tend to forget that. So what do my, what are my friends like? Well, hopefully I'm expressive enough that when you meet my friends, they will not be surprising as in like, it wouldn't be a surprise if you met my friends. And since I'm at least, I think I'm appropriately now expressive. I'm actually expressive because of them. Uh, I met my best friends, like lots of my best friends in college, and they are the reason why I am expressive. So in turn, then I have become expressive in response. So oftentimes we banked off each other for quite some long time. So if you ever meet my friends, which I used to hang out, I, I we used to like talk publicly like this um, about like hobbies and stuff. Uh, it would not be a surprise. It, it, my friends should not surprise you. They more or less just sound like me with different interests. Like interest is superficial. How we engage in our hobbies and stuff will be very, very similar. So if you ever hear like, oh, but technically probabilistic models, Democrat, like, de like thinking about different angles, I, I wouldn't have to say anything. My the guys that I typically refer to, um, they would say all of it without me having to complete any of the ideas because all of us are expressive enough and that's how we met. And largely we're best friends because we're very much alike to each other. So I have a lot of deep, most of my best friends are probably as sappy, as sappy and agreeable as i am um and there are flaws to that too there are you know pros and cons we, we've gone through all sorts of like adversity various different forms of adversity and they all revolve around that so if you like someone right if you like hanging out with someone and you want friends like that oftentimes learning how to express that kind of thing and get you access to those um, people or it increases the likelihood of that. And that's kind of the whole networking thing, not for business, but networking thing for friends. It's always, it starts with the first person, I would say. It starts with the first person. Like uh, I've met a few people on Twitch in the past couple of years and if there's anything like we are kind of, we are friends to some extent, but I'm not like their best of friends. However, since I am their friend and I know enough about them, I'm more likely to help them connect with other people. Like that's kind of what I, I actually largely look out for. Like, uh, whenever, uh, Foon, Whenever Foon gets a chance to meet Sub Zero, there, there's a chance they could be good friends because they're both not not that I know enough about them, but I you can use the information. Like Sub Zero's from Norway, it, it might sound a generalization, but a generalization by coincidence is still more than zero. Like pretending like you can put two strangers together and they'll just hit it off. That's still less than knowing like Sub Zero's from Nor Norway and so is Foon. So they're both from Norway. I got gathered more information from them because I was sharing across from them. So they could end up being friends, right? So uh, the people that I've met online over time, whenever I see someone who like, oh yeah, this person, they're, they're like just starting up and they're like looking for someone. Maybe we should connect two of them together. 
it's not the same as matchmaking. We're, we're not talking about matchmaking here. We're, we're more talking about, like, um, if I see someone who's deficient in interactions and social skills, the natural way to, one natural surefire way is to observe their behavior, try to understand them as much as possible, and then see if you can find someone who is also very similar. Because it would be too arrogant to know that you're doing it. Because obviously I have friends. I have lots of lie like lots of things to juggle. And there's no way I can paint that unrealistic re um expectation. And sometimes I have friends who I, I just don't resonate with, right? However, we can care about each other. You don't necessarily have to be joined at the hip to be friends. Um uh, and you can use that leverage to help them find someone. Help them find someone. And then be happy for them. When they dump you like a bad habit because you're not... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that, that happens, right? The my What brings a smile to my face a lot of times is... If I'm not that great of a friend with someone... However, like I saw someone else who's appropriate for them... And then they just happen to uh, kick it off. You can then have a parasocial relationship. With them. What I mean by that is, you you can be that person like, I was there, I was there. Th this dynamic duo, I'm so glad that they hit it off, because I w could not be that friend for them, right? Like, there there are times when you want to help someone, right? And you can see it. And it actually provides a lot of objectivity when you're not interested in being friends with them, kind of like a therapist or something. And then you want to encourage them by using your objectivity. So there are other ways to encourage friendships without actually volunteering yourself because you probably know it'll eventually create conflict of interest. Like uh, there are people that think uh, working being close friends while working for the same things is a great idea in my opinion if you can help it prefer not to do that. as in like professionally it creates such a headache and a conflict of interest if you have to have to that's perfectly fine if you want to like take the leap that's perfectly fine but there are a lot of times in the digital age the alg algorithm enriches for collecting people of the same things. However, they are connected by a common interest, right? And sometimes that common interest might be the only tether they have. So when that falls apart and turns into a conflict of interest, it makes for a very weak friendship. So sometimes I even think that making friends online can be a recipe for low percentage success because uh, friendships are not only necessarily built on compatibility or common of interest, you know, like a common interest it is also built upon foundations of understanding. You can explore things outside of, outside of common interest. I mean, like uh, two friends getting together because they're very good at video games. Like, if you got together with your friends because you're both good at video games, I hope you build more than that. Right? Um, the thing about the internet is it gets you to stick with the same things you've been doing. So, like, oh, what is your friend like? Well, I have a Fortnite friend. Or, oh, I have this friend. We play Minecraft together. Immediately, I would ask, so what else do you do together? Like... Do you chat about other things other than Minecraft? Do you ever discuss your disagreements? Like, do you share new things with each other? Because in one or two years, if that still is, oh, we just hang out whenever we play Minecraft together, then this is going to sound really direct and aggress a, a bit aggressive. You're not friends. You're not friends yet. You're, you're potential friends. Friends grow with each other. Um, standing still in friendship means that you are only connected on that one thing. 
yeah, friendship goes grows way beyond that. You cannot simp like in a very conservative way. You cannot weigh friendship on the one thing. So nowadays, when when you say you have a friend, and then you add a modifier to that friend, that means you have more. You need to look for new things, or you need to encourage yourself to look for new things to establish a stronger friendship. When you start saying like, "Oh, I have a Japanese-speaking friend," or "I have a a classmate," I have a math friend in our calculus class. That's too specific, in my opinion. You want to broaden that. They they're still your friends for the time being. You want to solidify it because the math thing is temporary. The Japanese speaking thing might be temporary, depending on your objective. Like if your objective is to make a friend because you wanted to practice Japanese until you're fluent, that's temporary. You want to make a Japanese speaking friend who you enjoy video games with and. Share other time with, not for the sole purpose of that can be a starting point, and that's where the internet does well. They collect people based on common interest, and it ends there. That that's it. There's no there's nothing else. It it ends there. the The common interest is the common interest. So the moment the interest is lost, like for example, I can tell you one about parasocial relationship. When a content creator decides they're going to change directions, right? When a friend decide, when a content creator decides to change directions, then immediately everyone doesn't. The people who only care about that one interest is gone, right? So those ones that have stronger parasocial relationships, I think they are more inclined to develop friendships. Than the ones that would drop just because the interest no longer aligns. It's no longer an investment in the person. Shouldn't friends also be a way to unwind? It, it is.、Mm -hmm. So if your only connection is Minecraft, that immediately creates a barrier. Oh yeah, true, true. Like it. So the thing is, um, friends. Uh, rec um, uh, what I'm trying to say is, a relationship, a social relationship. Wherever the paradigm of your friends are, like say you just met, so it's there. It has a lot of conditions.、Um, friends become stronger friends when slowly you build more and more unconditional things. Like you lift the barrier, you lift the barrier, you remove the barrier. Oh hey, I met a friend through Duolingo, right? And then now you want to say. Okay, how do I not have to use Duolingo to be friends with this person? How do I develop other things to lift the time? Like, oh, you only see this friend because when we're Duolingoing or when we're going to work, this is the only time, right? Or this is the only way I connect with this friend. And I don't think it. Uh, is an obvious thing to do. I think, generally speaking, is very common, like YouTube algorithm and TikTok, that if you're brought together by that interest, that's where it stops. The interest stops developing,、um, and oftentimes that is acceptable because you're in a parasocial relationship, right? On YouTube, when you're looking at a personality, that is the only value, actually. So it's very objective, is logical, because they have no feedback. So that doesn't help you practice what a friendship requires. Friendship requires maintenance. It requires things that you might be thinking feels like a chore, but、uh, like a like a chore. It requires a lot of effort on both ends, right? A lot of misunderstandings, a lot of compromises. There's a big but coming, but hear me out. Big but, three T's, three T's, really big but. That is unironically 
the best part about having a social relationship with someone. All the troubles you go to, all the troubles you go through, all the times you spend solving problems together, those things in the long run makes your friendship nearly unbreakable. So um, that's kind of nearly the opposite of what kids, younger kids spend nearly all of their free time doing. There's so less time uh, ironing out social relationships and you don't have to give up TikTok and all that stuff. The idea is to have both, like a little bit of both. Mm, I think the deficiency in social interactions is so apparent, um, especially when interacting in a in a manner that's only one sided. Like right now, you could yell at me or something. That's still more than yelling at the screen. Like, oh my gosh, my favorite content creator is such an idiot right now. And then you're like, you're, you're like, you know, you have no feedback from how you're feeling. Like, it's like, don't worry. You know, if you were yelling at me that I'm about to be an idiot, my, my comment would be something like, wait, 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 hold up. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will be an idiot for you and us, and it'll be funny and we'll laugh to laugh together about it. Right? So then maybe something that you might think it's negative and you're worried becomes something happy and funny like an inside joke. I'll show you a big butt, fictitious. I'll show you a big butt. You're not friends if it's just one thing really bringing you together. Yeah, more acquaintances. Exactly. However, you can start like that. You can start friendships like that. Yes, flamingo at the window. <laughs> Flamingo at the window and the building. That's where it all started, Blair. That's all where it all started. Exactly. Yeah, I would love to find a Chinese friend where we can learn off each other, for example, but I would think it to grow into something more. Yes. Yep. Have more discussions. Like when you're learning, when you're learning how to speak Chinese or like exchanging Chinese, then you would talk in different topics. Learning a language is beautiful, by the way, because you naturally have to learn how to talk topics right i said that there's not a strong correlation between communication skills and you know like communication skills and language that's applying the idea that you're only learning the language you're strongly learning the language for its mechanics however when you engage with another human being there's a natural tendency to have to express yourself to have to learn different topics and stuff so in my way, I tried, to, I, like, if you stare away from that focal point, you'll acquire language, but you'll also acquire a friend. Okay, that sounded like some poor kids TV thing, but I, I'm really dead serious about it. Like, engaging in activities is a great starting point to make friends, provided that you engage in activity knowing you're interacting with another human being. Uh, nowadays, when you play video games, that's not what that is, right? Like kids, in my opinion, younger people forget that there's another human being at the other end of the screen. A lot of times, like almost scaringly, a, a lot of times. Those for anyone you build a friendship with needs to be just more. Yeah, you you want to work towards more, you know, work towards more, constantly working towards more because it's another human being. I wanted you to relate it back to language. Exactly. Flamingo at the window is the kanji for Ban Gohan. Oh, yeah, it is. Flamingo wants dinner. Exactly. Ban Gohan, the flamingo at the dinner. Exactly. Bangohan. It it also uh in Chinese it deals with like late being like late like the in evening. So that's where that whole dinner comes from, right? Uh Gohan Gohan is food, right? 
and then it's also for meal and stuff so then you add late and evening and flamingo at the dinner there it is flamingo at dinner <laughs> anyways yeah another we, we can we'll probably revisit this topic a lot in the future so let's uh, try to complete this I talk about these things all the time. I'm I'm very concerned about people's health. It's weird flex. Hold my phone. Hold my phone. Weird flex. I think one of the nice things about being concerned with other people's health is that I typically am not concerned with my own health anymore for the time being. Why is that a weird flex? It also means that I think in, if you're a very healthy person, that you're able to juggle a lot of things, it makes time for you to concern yourself with. And that's kind of where I am right now. I have a lot of time on my hands and things are pretty good. So it gives me a lot of time to worry, like think about what I could maybe contribute in, in different ways. I, I think I want to say that because it's a distinction between someone who's doing something to help their own career. That's that's an entirely different story. That's a young, ambitious person, and you have to keep in mind that uh, when the motivation is not lined up, it, it's a conflict of interest. So like. You never know. I might be selling a product tomorrow. Don't worry. I'll sell the secret to life if I if I have it. I honestly, honestly, it, that's not a big distinction. If I found the secret to life, I, I would obviously try to distribute it. I, I haven't found the secret to life. All right. I'm giving you an example of how to be happy, like using my own experience, and that's it. Whether that is helpful or not, I'm not selling anything. Finally, progress in knowing what is meant a month later. Indeed, right, player? Good that you can say that without being altruistic. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't have to be altruistic anymore. Like, it's it's also comforting when you go around and say, you don't have to think of me as a saint. I have my motivations. I only I only participate in generosity when I can when I am comfortable myself um back in my day though when i was younger i would i had a terrible relationship like when i feel awful i still think that i should help people and that's well and good i i largely succeeded however that was at the expense of myself like i, I got worse and worse so i did less and less i was unable to perform as much it's it's one of those things like one of those like vicious cycles if you uh, feel better by helping other people but you can't help yourself then you only get progressively worse over time if you're unable to help yourself then you're you become even worse at helping others and it's a uh, hypocritical because if you can't help yourself how do you expect to help others and that is kind of the advice that i tend to do to balance the thing like the person says, oh, yeah, I want I want to do this. I can't help but say yes. It's like, hold on. Hold on a second. How are you doing right now? Right? And the logical uh, argument is if you are doing well, then go out there and help people. If you are not doing well, the likelihood of this ending up in a positive place is low. I'm not saying it's not existent. There are many people who end up they have no way to help themselves so they help others to get inspired on how to help themselves that can happen however if you can help it focus on yourself first get into a state in which you can help others right and that also comes with caveats you could end up being a person who only help yourself right all, all the mixes the idea is though usually statistically i don't want to say too much statistics, but 
If you are unable to help yourself and go through problems and problem solve yourself, the likelihood that a lot of your advice about helping people and encouraging people to help themselves would probably be non-existent. Now you can help them temporarily, like say you have a skill that you can offer, then you create dependency instead. As in, you're a person who offers them the solution. However, those people will not be able to help themselves because you yourself have not focused on that part of yourself to begin with. So there's a difference between someone who's offering advice about sustainable lifestyle choices for someone to help themselves, like problem solving skills, versus someone who's offering solutions. As in, buy this to solve the thing you don't want to solve. This is the band-aid. This is the thing that will temporarily solve your problems and hope that you live happily ever after as long as you continue to pay for that solution, right? That's, and it's well and good. If you have a lot of resources, I would totally pay to save time. Like, uh, sometimes, Things go fast when you have money or you can just buy the solution. People pick what is important to them. Uh, for me, it's communication and problem solving. That's what's worth the time. For others, maybe not so much. They just want to make a lot of money. <laughs> Sometimes they skip that one. Yeah. All right. Wameitian. Inga. Uh, whoa. Inga. Oh. Like in prepositions. Ooh. 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 I listen to songs every day. Okay. I just. What? What? Tinker <clears throat> See, <laughs> Go Shema,音乐。音乐,sorry,音乐。他最喜欢听什么音乐?哦,音。他最喜欢听什么音乐?My, oh, <coughs> uh, my voice is drying up. Pass that time. Go. Uh. 学校中午唱唱书你呃你会会唱 uh, Oh, I forgot that grammar point too. I need to know the 会 and the 在 the 会 and 在 grammar. 
，你会，你会唱，唱，你会唱，唱英语歌，英语歌吗？英语歌吗？<咳>老师，老师会唱会唱，会唱中啊 ，no， 汉语汉语歌，汉语歌。Oh no! <laughs> we did. We only finished three lessons. Oh no! Okay, okay. All right, focus. <coughs> 他们，呃、uh, ，他们哥哥，哥哥，他们的，他们的哥哥，哥哥，对不起，对不起 ，That's not it. 玩，啊、uh, ，玩，玩，哦、oh, ，呃，每天，每天下午。每天下午玩,玩电脑游戏，游戏 ，speed run in before I make errors。我们的孩子喜欢看英语书。我们的我们的孩子孩子喜欢看英语英语英语书。呃<笑>加油！嗯，加油。I don't actually know the characters for it because they're probably different characters. The only jaw that I have right now is jaw as in. Oh wait, I do know one of the characters. Jaw. I know. Uh, I know one of the characters. Ja, I don't know Yo or Oil. I'm no, yeah, I didn't get this character yet. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get uh this character yet. Mao Han Fun. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get this character yet. But Ja or Ad. <coughs> 他们在吃饭。他们他们在。他们他们在。在吃饭。吃饭。他们在吃饭。我不喜欢听他的音乐。Imagine, imagine going this. 我不 That's like talking behind someone's back. 我不喜欢。呃，我不喜欢听听他们。Uh, or Ting Ta the Ting Ta the Ying Yue. I don't like to listen to uh, his music. Oops, I've got light. I don't like to listen to his music. Uh. 他最喜欢听什么音乐？他、uh, 最喜欢，最最最喜欢喜欢。他最喜欢听什么音乐？听什么,什么音乐？音乐。电脑。电脑。你在做什么？你在做什么？你，你做在。在做什么？他在看书。他在，他在看书。不，对。你最喜欢谁？你。最。最喜欢。喜欢。你最喜欢谁？ That's kind of funny. Someone, I remember someone asked me, "Uh, who is my favorite viewer?" 
Okay. Imagine a stranger asking you as a content creator, who's your favorite viewer? <laughs> what what music do you listen to? <clears throat> uh Ni. Uh Ni Tian. Uh Ni Ting. Ah uh, Ni Ting. Uh Ni Ting. Shama Shama Ying Yue. Ying Yue. Oh, just Shama Ying Yue. Yeah, Ni Ting Shama Ying Yue. Kind of an insecure question. Well, I have a response to it. Uh, typically, when someone asks me what's my favorite, it's based on recency. So if I recently and frequently interact with someone, then that's the person that's on my mind at the moment. So in, in that way, they are tentatively and currently my favorite viewer. So not only is my favorite viewer everyone I interact with, it is everyone and anyone at one time. And that is actually my stock psychological logical question and answer to whenever someone tell, asks me, what's my favorite thing to do right now? Or what's my favorite thing in general? And I usually rely on recency because at any one time I can revisit someone that I have. I, the idea is to focus on the present, be appreciative of the present. However, you can visit things in the from the past in the present so naturally whoever is around me right now i pay attention to them the most and if they fade away i am not focused on what was but what could be in the future so if they leave i like what i have now if they come back i still will focus on the present what we have now and that's kind of my uh, stock response to things it's not that i fall out of favoritism towards someone is knowing that the favorite moments are the moments you share in the moment and what you can garner from the past is to um, elevate whatever is happening in the present my interaction with the people i have now is dependent and owed to the privilege of all the people that i have interacted with prior so I thank them every day by carrying their experience with me into the next relationships. I would not be great at knowing how to make friends and interact with people if I didn't continuously cherish the memory I have with the people before me or the people I interacted with because I bring that experience with me. So when I play a video game, I don't discard old video game experience. They are one in the same most of the time. So the things that I like, the favorite things, are the embodiments of everything before it. So when I make a friend, all the experiences of my prior friends, long lost friends, friends that are still with me, are going to be channeled into the current friend. Right? They are they are the summation of my favorite things i don't ex i don't exclude my favorite things from the things i like so when i'm learning a language i don't exclude english from learning the language i don't exclude i'm this isn't a pragmatic thing we're not talking about like mechanics objectivity favorite is subjective right so trying to imbue objectivity into it, in my opinion, it may be helpful, but ultimately it comes down to subjectivity. So know that when I'm interacting with someone, I'm using all the collective knowledge that I have from all my favorite friends, like all the friends before me. So whoever I'm interacting with now is getting all the attention. That's... That's how it works, right? For me, my eye is on the present. And I don't pine about the past. I use the past. They are always there with me. 
the things that I forget are the things that aren't important. That's that's kind of a little cold feeling, but generally speaking, if you have to be brutally honest with yourself, your life is filled with a lot of privileged things. Being very insecure about living in the past and things you forget, things you can't experience anymore. If you're someone like me, you don't miss that because it's always with you. It, I, I bring all those things with me. My friends are with me. The good, the bad, the, all the different. I bring them and I will share them. I am the collective body of the stories. So when someone asks me, what's my favorite thing? <laughs> the current thing I'm doing. Most of the time. Um, the way I can empathize with another person is I ask them, what do you think is your favorite thing? So I can get an idea of what they think they measure their favorite things by, and then I can offer, a, I can offer an answer that coincides with what they think. If they're asking me personally, that would be my stock answer. And then I would ask them, what do you think is your favorite thing? What makes something favorite to you? And then my answer can change because then I can figure out something that fulfills the requirements. Usually I would say something like frequency or something that makes you unwind or something you watch every day, then I can answer those questions. Those are more objective, as in you can actually measure them. Otherwise, there's no favorite thing like the present. You can build for the future with the present, and you can bring the past with you in the present. So that is my stock default question to that, like answer to that if i had to um really really concisely fill like answer all the loadedness of the question um sometimes i get a little sassy and someone asks me like what's your favorite game the current game i'm playing like they they want me to answer like they're fishing for something or they're setting me up for something but really like you have to know that if you're asking someone who's playing a game, what are you getting at? I'm playing a game. It's probably my favorite thing right now. It, to me, personally, obviously. Because if I'm playing a game and all I'm thinking about is my favorite game, then you don't really like the thing you're playing. I, I, I'm going to be real. If you are voluntarily doing something and the first thing you're thinking about is, oh man, I wish I could be playing my favorite game. Why aren't you? You see what I mean here? Like, I I know this sounds a little bit like a, a bit passive aggressive or maybe a little bit too direct, but generally speaking, I don't want to encourage people or give people an idea that I do something constantly thinking that I could be doing something else. I don't talk to people like, man, dude, I wish I could be talking, hanging out with my friends right now instead of talking to you. That that's how I interpret things. When someone says, "Oh," like they ask me, they ask me like, "Oh, who's your who's your favorite person?" I'm like, "Wait, what? What, what are you? Why are you asking that?" Right? Like the the reason why is I think people who are capable of asking those questions are individuals who, when they're doing something and they're choosing to do something, sometimes. They're more preoccupied with what it could be than what it is. Like using Duolingo, by like using Anki and stuff. You're not thinking about what you can do with it in the present because you're more focused on what it could have been and it's not. So that's the only thing, in my opinion, that's one of the major things preventing you from making use of it, something. You're not building a future for it. You're basically stuck in the past. You're thinking about all the things you want and this thing doesn't have. So instead of um, seeing it for what it is, you're seeing it for what it could have been. 
and uh I know this is gonna end on a serious topic. It's not too far from thinking about a tool and then having that behavior transfer to how you picture people. I want to make friends with this person because I think this person will be X, will fulfill X for me in the future. And then you become friends with this person and you realize that this person doesn't fulfill your idealistic future. And now you're concentrated on what you thought this person should have been as opposed to what they are now. And that is very distinguishable when you ask someone like, oh, hey, oh, you want to you want to be in a relationship? I see. Why? Why not? Why not? Just go out, like go out, meet some new people. And there's this one person who said like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I would be in a relationship right now, but all, all the all the people, they're just so obsessed with me. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean they're so obsessed with you? Like, well, you know, they're like very clingy and I don't want to like, oh, oh, OK, so. Is it because that's what you're projecting and that's what you want? How is it that? every everyone around you is clingy all of a sudden like I, I don't understand that that is a symptom of what i'm what i think happens a lot where they don't observe the present they observe what's happening and what they want to happen so they want people to not be clingy and be helping them and supporting them and being intelligent and whatnot but they keep thinking that uh, based on their past experiences, uh, what they're doing is not the problem. But yet in the present, all I hear them describing is that they might be the problem or they might be the one that is creating this situation as opposed to the other way around. So you stop living in the present. You start pining for the past and you start look constantly looking so far in the future that you have no solutions or problem solving in the present and that's kind of weird it's a weird situation i really have no idea well i do have some idea but it's a very slow process obviously and i'm not a therapist so it's not this is not professional advice it's just anecdotal right it's served as a storytelling thing um, I would probably have less of an extreme interaction if I was a therapist professionally, because you would have different ranges You would have people who are open minded to help, right? Because they're, they go to therapy voluntarily being helped, um, or being open to help. The opposite end happens when you're a content creator, people come to you with their minds made up, like those individuals tend to already have their minds made up. So it's not my place and I'm not a trained professional and this is not a professional setting in an appropriate setting to offer any sort of commentary. My only thought was that's unfortunate. I hope you find clarity or whatever that makes it possible. I actually was a little bit more direct to the person. I say, well, it, it kind of seems like I, I want to encourage people like if you are constantly surrounded by what you think are unnecessarily clingy people, then the chance, the odds are it's you that creates that attraction. Because the odds, if you're telling me that you're meeting new people and all those people happen to be the same type of people, that is so statistically unlikely that the, the simpler, you know, thing that you might want to, um, entertain is that you're the person that's doing that something about your and that's kind of roughly victim blaming i don't know enough about the person but that is very suspicious yes it is very suspicious when someone and it's not a it, it's not a happy thing like i don't get any kick from it i only see a person who can't find 
someone to hang out with right and there's also plenty of times where um i've encountered people who say like oh i have friends but they eventually just keep flaking out on me and they keep like abandoning me like everyone keeps betraying me and lying to me and i start thinking that is such a crappy place to be however uh a person who's like weak already and having problems the last thing you want to tell them in my opinion in my opinion not not professional again um the last thing you want to tell them is like if a lot of people are constantly lying to you and you're saying everyone always lies to you and you always can't trust anyone don't you think that's very unlikely to happen if you're meeting random people or you're meeting various people the chances of everyone being liars except you and the chances of everyone taking advantage of you is very unlikely the common denominator here is the person the down the really problematic thing that i get very uncomfortable with is the idea that they need to seek someone who's objective and have influence over their life in order to break out of that cycle because um you can't counter by slapping the person harder right lots of people might say oh but you can do tough love and kick them in the buzz like i'm not that kind of person so and i'm not in a position of power to do something like that I've heard that story many, many times before, and it represents a, a lack of ability, like that one betrayal, that one flakiness, and then somehow that person continues to project that and continue to push people away. So only the people who are flaky and opportunists will att be attracted to that person, right? Um, and they tend to continuously have more tenuous relationships. It, it sucks because friendships and relationships kind of evolve with a mutual vulnerability. But if you don't have enough going on in your life, like healthiness and resilience in your life, it can be incredibly difficult to be vulnerable without the insecurity of being betrayed and not finding value it's kind of the really vicious cycle where you know how do you make money well with money but how do you make money if you don't have money yet it's like well you need to get money and that's one of the vicious cycles uh how do you make friends well you get friends and then you work on making friends but then if you lose friends how do you keep friends like with friends and it sucks. It really does suck. There comes a point where you just need therapy. Yeah. And it's not, obviously, it's not a, it's not my place to do that. Um, at least I don't think it's an appropriate place. It's an appropriate place for their parents. Hopefully someone, at least someone close to them. Right. And that's why I go back to the whole friendship thing. Something. Um, my first question often is, do you have someone like, I, I hope like, uh, someone had a heart problem recently. And my first question immediately when they were describing all their problems, like, do you have someone with you right now? Like maybe someone, a friend, a neighbor, someone there with you. And, and that, in my opinion, is probably the first thing I would go to. Do you have a point? Do you have a support system? Otherwise, you have no agency. No agency as a random person, regardless of your expertise, regardless of like how much you're qualified to do something. Personally, if you're like an expert and you have a lot of credibility, the last thing you want to do is try to risk your credibility when there are other more qualified and closer people to handle that, the support system. Otherwise, you can like do it professionally and handle it professionally. I don't have a license to practice. That's that's not my thing. I wouldn't weigh my credibility like that, even if I don't work in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Kate. I understand. Yeah, not in bad faith. Obviously not in bad faith. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be having these long discussions about these things if I didn't already uh, probably gleam that um, your perspective is probably from one from experience. <clears throat> yeah. Me? A lot of people project their own fears and insecurity onto other people and it ruined their relationship. Indeed. Here's here's something that sounds kind of off the other way off the other way. I think things like that, situations like that, could benefit so much from an active social system created by the internet an active social system of people who can turn that around as in like you know how like uh, an, an unstoppable force meets an immovable wall situation right um there can be so much more there are content creators who do this by the way um probably not more than the ones that project fears and insecurity and escalate fear and insecurities for like profit however in this case if the insecurities and fears are met by an equally and more overwhelming powerful force of problem solving and uh, understanding and tolerance, we can see a, tre a reverse trend in these kind of things. Do I believe that's in the future? I actually do believe that. There are quite a growing uptrend of this, like uh, services, accessibilities for for that type of thing because it, it is trying to catch up with the technical lot you know the digital age it's catching up uh i think human related social dependency is far slower than the technological revolution that is the digital age so the exacerbation of fear flaws gluttony all that stuff is getting triggered by technology far faster far more stimulating and i think uh the social relationships the paradigm the social relationship paradigm between people are playing catch up um and i don't think it will be this way forever at least i'm optimistic i don't think i'm gonna live long enough to see it though maybe i might that's how like long social relation like social relationship paradigms happen they happen like in a lifetime so i wouldn't try to hold my breath to say that i would live long enough to see it however it would be really wonderful to witness it happen i don't think humans are just going to sit and relax and find out that their entire species just ends up failing to form relationships with that's that sounds like a wild wild dystopian future a dystopian future that i hope does not come to pass uh uh right <laughs> that question <laughs> what book do you what books do you like to read um uh, 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 wait wait just kidding. I'm not thinking straight. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. We got to the end of our lesson. All right. We do have to do some of these before 15 minutes. And then I'm going to uh, review the pinyin for day two and then call it a day. Hmm. 
if I get to write any that is Yoshi she oh you guys get to hear Yoshi over and over again I think <laughs> oh my gosh this one's actually kind of complicated Yoshi Okay, okay. I would love to hear uh, how that experience turns out. I would love to hear... Your stories. Uh, both self taught and, you know, both self experienced and whatnot. One. 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 Uh, that's the wrong tone. I wasn't thinking. One. Okay. One. I think I've been saying the wrong one. tone for a while, actually. One. 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 Yeah, I've been saying the wrong tone today. <clears throat> That's why we look over things. The one. The Go. Okay. <clears throat> Go. Roll. Roll. Go. The one. 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 That's a good one. Ni ge 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 Okay. Wa ge 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 Ye ge wan na mai wan I will not be in the chat much more. Oh yeah, no worries. Mhm. Mm yeah, no worries. Wan that's how it Why? works, right? One. None. Ni. Do. Yo. Do. Go. Go. One. One. Go. Go. Ling. Ling. Jian. Jian. Oh,电脑游戏。电脑游戏。电脑游戏。电脑游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。
。电脑游戏，电脑游戏。哎，呃，他们的，他们的英语，英语书，英语书，英语书，他们的，他们的，他们的，他们的英语书。英语书，汉语课，课 ，Oops， 汉语课，他们，他们的，老师的，他们的，嗯，他们的，对，英语书，他们的，他们的，他们的，对，我们的，老师的。OK， 老师的英语书，他们的英国人英语书，对，嗯英语书，嗯，学校，校，真的吗？的真的，巴拉巴拉巴拉，真的吗？英语书。他们的老师的，他们的，他们的，他们的，他们的，他们，他们，英语书，英语书，汉语课，汉语课，啊，你们的，对 ，It's fine. There we go. 电脑，游戏。游戏，游戏，游戏，电脑游戏，电脑游戏，游戏。I keep wanting to put the wrong。游戏，电脑游戏，游戏，游戏。嗯哼，这是游游戏，电脑游戏，电脑游戏。电脑游戏，电脑游戏，游戏，游戏，游戏。呃、嗯、，Oops，、嗯 uh, 电脑游戏。I totally blanked out. Uh, don't do that. 电脑游戏，电脑游戏。OK OK OK. What? One. 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 What the? One. 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 玩。电脑游戏。电脑游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。电脑游戏。游戏。游戏。游戏。嗯嗯。游戏。游戏。游戏，电脑游戏，游戏，电脑游戏，电脑游戏。哎、欸，英语，英语 ，Oops， 也，英语，英语，汉语课，汉语课，英语，汉语课。呃，伦敦课，英语，医院，呃，啊哈哈哈 ，I see you， 
汉，汉语课，对，汉语课，英语，英，英语，汉语课，汉，蒙克 ，Oh no， 蒙克，蒙克 ，OK， <laughs> sorry。汉语课，不对，英语，呃，早上，汉堡包，对，对 ，I I panicked for a moment, temporarily. 玩，对，玩 ，fatigue. 玩 ，fatigue. 玩 Sharpness, sharpness 玩 fading. 玩，玩，玩，玩。It's kind of nice closing your eyes and then just writing it every once in a while. <coughs> 电脑游戏，游戏，游戏，电脑，电脑游戏。游戏，游戏，游戏 ，tracks， 游戏，游戏，电脑游戏。That was kind of bad. It's based on how I lost track of my hand position. 电脑游戏，游戏。Soon. Okay. Here we go. I don't know how close that was. Let's try again. Right, right. 电脑游戏 That felt off too. 嗯，电脑游戏 Okay. 哦 h my god! <laughs> I saw myself slip all the way to the top. That's that's not good. That's not good. Okay. <clears throat> 电脑游戏，游戏，游戏，游戏。电脑，电脑，电脑，电。游戏，对。<咳>钱包。呃。房子，房子。玩游戏，电脑，电脑，电脑，对，游戏，游戏，电脑，电脑，电，电脑，早上，红茶，游戏，下午，游戏，游戏。游戏，电脑，游戏，电脑游戏，嗯嗯，呃，姐姐，明年，电脑，电脑游戏，电脑游戏，游戏，台湾，台湾。电脑，电脑，呃，右边，右边，呜<咳>、哦、，OK， 英语书，英语书汉语，英语书 ，the reverse， 英语书，汉语课。数学，汉语，英国人 ，OK， 汉语，汉语，哎，汉语，英语书，英，英语，语书
汉语，汉语，北汉。嗯，英语书，英国人。汉语课，图书馆，汉语。I'm just double checking because I'm kind of fatigued, so I'm more likely to slip. 呃，空调，空调。Interesting. 呃，电视，电视，电视。空调，空调。空调，空调。呃，电视，电视。我们，中文，空调。你呢？空调，空，调。I totally forgot that's what the character is.、Hmm. Okay. 电视，空调，空调，空调。对。电视，漂亮。跑步。韩国。空调。电视。电视。电视。我们，空调，不对，电视，不要，啊，空，空调，哎，公园，公园，电视，电视，空调，空调，妈妈，妈妈，你呢？你呢？这是电影院，电,电视，电视，对，电影院，汉堡包，绿茶，真的吗？的吗电影院，电视，对，电视，电视，对，电视，电影院。赢，对。Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, that's fine. 呃，电影，电影，影，院，电视，电视，是，是，电视，还没有，玛丽。服务员，电影院。嗯，对，看，呃，看电影，看电影。OK， sure， 看。对，兵兵，大学生，看电影，看，看,看电影。看电影，看电影，看，对，说，看，看电影，影，呃，哦。看电影，咖啡馆，烤。Okay, can I get the other characters, please? No. Okay, Tommen. All right. 电话，电话，电话。Tommen. Tommen. 电话，电话。他们，我们，他的，他的 ，whoops， 他的电话号码，他们
Amen. Amen. 电话。电话。他们。Amen. 他们。对。呃，快乐。他们。也是。电话。明天。电话。电话，他们，电视，哦，电的，名字，电话，嗯，他们，他们，他们，他们，电话，电话，你们，你们。电话号码，电话号码，名字。All right, can I get the others? No. All right, we'll try a couple more times before we review and then call it a day. 看电影，看电影，电视，电视，看电影，英国人。不客气。电视，看电影，爸爸。呃，电视，哎，电视，看电影，影，影，看电影，看，嗯，电，影，电视，是，是。看电影，看电影院。Oops， 客气。电视。Can I get it? No. On. What is this? 看电影。看。狗。看。看电影，电视，面<笑> ，OK， 看，呃，电影 ，OK， 呃、啊，看电影，看，呃、uh, ，Oh， that that's too high， <笑>看、uh, 看电影 ，I got a little high fee there， just a little bit。看，看电影，信，呃，电影院，不。我 keep going. Uh, I guess I'll keep going a little bit since I only have one heart left, right? Eventually, I'm gonna slip up. I think. Naughty. 最爱，最爱，最爱。哪里？哪里？哪里？哪里？哪里？哪里？最爱，最爱。呃，请问，哪国人？哪里？客气。哪里？哪里？哪里？最呃最爱哪里？哪里？哪里？哪儿？什么？什么 ？Whoops！ 呃，最近哪里？最爱？最爱？最爱？最爱？哪？呃、uh, okay. ，最爱哪里？不在。谁的？嗯，哪里？对，哪里？哪里？谁的？谁的？谁的 ？OK， 不在，不在。请问？请问？
，最爱。OK， 电视。How many exercises are outside the three dudes? What the heck? 电,电话，电视，看电影，电影儿,子儿子，电视，电话，呃，公公寓，公寓。OK， 电话，电话，电视，电，电视，电，是，哎，电视，不长，电话，电影院，呃，英文。Okay, hold up. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I'll do a couple more. 电话电话 Okay. 呃、uh, ，电脑电话电话号码电脑游戏啊，电脑游戏电脑游戏嗯呃，看电影。电话，电脑 ，All right, All right, All right， 电，啊，电脑，脑，电脑，电话，电，电话，电话，电脑，电，电话，看电影，电脑，呃。电影院，电脑游戏，听，啊 ，there it is， 听 ，OK， 听 ，we got it， 听 ，we broke in，we did it， 听 ，oh wait， oh no 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 that's fine， 听 ，oh it's not quite the same as the other ting。In this thing, wasn't there? Oh no! Actually, I'm gonna have to look. Ting, ting. As in a cut ting. Ting. Like this right rattle. Ting. Is it really that? Ting. Hmm. Ting. Ting. Second wind. The coin activate. Wait, let me look at cutting. Uh, cutting was what house? House stuff. Talk about price. Blah blah blah. Clothing house trip. Here we go. Oh, it does.、Uh, it was slightly different. Has a lip. Has a little lip. Okay. Maybe that's a stylistic thing. I don't. I don't I'm not quite sure. 跳舞跳舞 Okay. We finally got it. 跳舞，跳跳舞，哎，跳。OK， 跳舞，跳舞。No, no surprises， so it's OK。跳舞，跳舞。Wait。跳舞。Oh， I don't think I can do that with my eyes closed。跳舞。跳舞。Oh, that's too hard. 跳舞。Okay, hang on. Let me try again. 跳舞。No, no, 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 no. I don't trust myself. 跳舞。We we need more experience with those. 跳舞。Those strokes. This one's okay. The left one's fine. 跳舞。This one not so much. 跳舞。That was okay. Let's try again. I don't know how close that was. Let's try.、It. It, it look, it felt really messy. So, ting, okay, ting, ting, 
Keep Team. Okay. This one's okay. Team. 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 I like doing these like eyes closed things. Uh, Kai. Kai. And let me guess. Kai and. Uh, Jui Ai. Yeah, Jui Ai. Jui Ai. Kai. Okay. Jui Jin. Jui Jin. Uh, oh no, I. Okay, fine. I. Okay, Ah, that that was ugly. I I felt it. Kiao Wu. Kiao Wu. Okay. Kiao Wu. Not sure. Okay. Kiao Wu. Okay, let's try again. Kiao Wu. Kiao Wu. Kiao Wu. It's, it's gonna be hilarious. I think it's gonna be funny to look back on this and see how off I am and how lax it is. But I think that's a really fun, engaging way to uh, practice strokes. Oh, okay, let's look at this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. That's different. Okay. This one, not a chance. No, 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 no. Well, maybe. Okay, here we go. Oh, that <laughs> was close. I kind of forgot the bottom right hand radical. This is different right here. That's really different. Okay. All right, let's, we can get the top part though. Oh, rip. I, I messed up the shock order there. Okay. Nah, 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 I don't got this. The spacing's weird. Show. <clears throat> Show. Okay. <laughs> it's so off. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, it's just a little yeah, we need some need some time with this one. That's so different. Those radicals are so different. 
Except for the bottom left one. That's the end of that. All right, so we got pretty close. We got pretty close. Uh, it's we're not responsible to Han Hanzu today. Not Hanzu today. Uh, just Pinyin, Pinyin. So uh, no, uh, no, no, no. Oh so, no. Yo. Si. No, yo. Si. <sighs> I keep trying to make it into tone one. Si. Yo, si. Yo, si. Yo, si. Ping. Ping. Uh, not. Tiao. Wu. Tiao. Si. Huan. Or Si Huan. Huan. As a standalone. Han. Chu. Ge. I Ying Yu Chang <clears throat> And then we also have Zui Uh Zui Okay, okay so let's put together the vocabulary on the side that some key phrases that we want to combine all of them with uh wang uh wang wang now yo wrong Yo, yo, si, si, yo, si, yo, si, one, one, dear now, yo, si, uh, ing, ing, uh, ying, ying, yu, ying, yu. Ying Yu the We can do Jue Jue Si Huan Jue Si Huan Shama 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 Ga Ah, no Chu Chu That works Chu We're in integrating like all these vocabulary as much as we can Um Ah uh, 
Ooh. Remind ourselves of. Die. Uh. Die. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Shu. Die. Can't shu. Die. Can't shu. Chang Chang uh Han Yu Han Yu Ge Uh have we tried to incorporate oh uh Maybe like ni ni hui ni hui ni hui kan ni hui kan ni hui kan ni hui kan ying ying yu ying yu uh shu ni hui kan ying yu shu that's fine too. It's not too bad. Uh, we were trying. I'm trying to remind myself of Hui and Dai as uh, helping, helping modifiers. So like Dai Khan, Dai plus verb, right? Going like doing that action right now. And Hui Khan, able to, ability to. And what was another vocab? Uh, what was another grammar thing? Is there another grammar thing that I might have forgotten? No, I think we've covered most of the grammar things. Oh, I like, uh... Ni... Ni... Khan... Khan... Bu... Bu Khan... Hmm. you. Han you. Han you shu. Right? Something like that. The vocabulary is pretty small, so I was yapping a little bit too hard today. The vocabulary is very tiny. <laughs> so the thing I want to remember in yesterday, yesterday's vocab, like the last unit's vocabulary, I forgot about positional so jody uh jody jody naughty 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 uh i forgot lu i was stuck on lu for a while what does lu look like for getting the right side of Lu. Uh oh man, so it's this. I gotta remember that. It kinda reminds me of uh Reminds me of Tiao. Okay. Woo. That's fine. Just Lu. 
Oh, I forgot. I forgot one. Wong. I forgot Wong. Wong towards something. Wong, which I messed up. That last one was. I got a. Uh, Dao. Dao and Wong mixed up again. I need to stop doing that. Because going to something is also towards something. So when I'm thinking in Chinese, uh, or when I'm thinking like the interface between Chinese and English, uh, either of them are okay in the sense of if you're doing it towards something. When you're going to something and towards something, they're, the, they're similar in English. But I got Gao, uh, Gao, Gao and Wang mixed up. So I need to make sure I don't forget that. All right. Let's wrap today. We had some really wonderful discussions. I think there is most definitely a take home message today. And uh, I was generalizing a lot. You know, there was a lot of generalizations, but there was also a lot of disclaimers, right? These are observations I see a lot of times. And I am a person who kind of runs towards problems because I like solving problems. Um, it would be awesome. I don't know what this is going to look like in another year or two years or three years, but I could imagine myself entering the professional field again to be able to do like a more productive role, um, a more outreach and productive role in affecting people's livelihoods. However, I haven't really considered how I'm going to go about that. I think a lot of times it's probably this is probably one of my insecurities that i shared a bunch of times because of medical school or like why am i why didn't i pick medical school um lots of times i don't i i myself am a little bit of a coward or like a little bit more of a concern insecurity about being unable to right and that responsibility is a heavy burden i think um anyone who pass up medical school um in search of like scientific trying to get more into like ob objective evaluations like scientific research and whatnot you you still write and try to contextualize the value of your scientific research but there's something about the pursuit of knowledge and intellectual discoveries while promoting a positive intellectual enrichment like future seeking and stuff so working with younger people working with intellectuals encouraging them to learn further enabling them is like the near complete opposite of being in a position where someone's livelihood is dependent on you in a real way in a very real way like a teacher in my opinion is more of a first responder versus uh, not not in the sense of emergency help or something like it's a first choice or like a safe beginning choice to enable and lead someone to a successful life and like benefit it, uh, teachers are more like a preventive measure right it's for quality lifestyle and stuff and it's still that lifestyle and those choices are still incredibly beneficial for people who are in trouble right but then the difference is the, the capacity is different because now you're the you're kind of the end choice as in when nothing else works or it's it's a place where i think right now stereotypically stereotypically they see it as a life last choice I think the paradigm for mental health, lifestyle choices, um, and interacting with a professional or, um, that may actually rehabilitate interpersonal skills, um, it's become less and less more of a treatment than it is more for a preventive lifestyle. And I don't actually think it was this way because something dramatically changed. I largely think the roles have shifted. Now, in my opinion, more than ever, just to ground the, the context, all the things that I was talking about, my concerns is that 
formal education, like teachers, they're no longer the first default response for preventive. The responsibility has shifted to, for lack of a better word, therapists or other experts, right? Or like communication experts or something, or motivational coaches, uh, life coaches, executive function people. Those are now the preventive defaults. No longer is it desirable, perhaps, or even nest or like taught, or um, at least in the United States, it feels like formal education is no longer like the default. So teachers, mentors, and whatnot are no longer seen as kind of the default or the preventive measure. The one where you go into that environment. You're going there in an open mind to be influenced, right? To be influenced in a manner that promotes problem solving, trouble, you know, problem solving, critical thinking, and communication skills. I don't think that's the default anymore. For whatever people believe, I, I don't actually know how education scene. I've been asking around whenever I bump into students what the educational scene is like for them, try to get a collective knowledge. But it seems like due to lots of conflicts of interest and maybe ideologies and whatnot, the default is no longer coming from teachers, mentors. And now it's going more like preventive things and skill development comes from interacting with like life coaches and I don't know, your favorite content creator is selling some self-improvement program or master classes for that matter, right? Master classes, any one per, any of the numerous and thousands of people who are repackaging their own master classes, uh, those are becoming the default. So there's no shade in there. It, they're, they're doing the uh, responsibility that now has a demand, right? Self voluntarily help and choices are more common now than obligatory uh, enrichment in school. So that's kind of the concern that I've been raising about interpersonal skills and communication skills. Um, now it's become voluntary. Lots of things are facilitated by a machine or a tool, which can work and work provided the two are mutually in agreement. Uh, it doesn't stop from my constant interactions with people who <clears throat> think they interact sufficiently with another human being based on all of the interactions they have predominated by not interacting with the human being. So in my opinion, that's kind of where all the concerns And what's even, I mean, I'm guilty of that because I obviously didn't use Chinese to interact with anyone at the moment. Nor did I use uh, Japanese to interact with the Japanese speaker at any time. And in fact, I actually do plan on trying to see if I can leverage long, large language models in the future in order to negotiate an alternative to people developing language skills, at, at least in my opinion, um, like how to apply and try to be creative with yourself through a large language model that may enable one to bridge that inevitability that you're going to interact with a human being or lots of human beings. And that to me is how one can productively, I envision, can productively change tools that we have today to encourage the natural bridge to aiding in forming interpersonal relationships. Because honestly, your computer like there are plenty probably would be okay with that i i don't really know what the current experts opinions on i think to me anecdotally um i was pre-digital age so naturally when people talk to me it seems like uh there is a big disparity between someone who's in education or in a position that they interact regularly with clients or different forms, different levels of familiarity, and then one who is possibly incredibly intelligent, but the way the communication skills and whatnot is something really something I'm not familiar with. 
Now the question is, am I living in under the rock? So I've been testing this social experiment for a while. Um, it's also why I decided to language learn. One of the uh, underlying things about learning a new language, but in in the idea of trying to interact with people of this gener, you know, whatever the generation of language learners are considered, and see how I resonate. And so far, it's been okay. I'm genuinely still a little bit. I require so much more experience to know if it is normal for like how normal is it for people to learn something and this is the type of like environment they usually get because um, as a streamer uh, I'm accelerating the opportunity right if I was a viewer like if I just chat and go to someone's channel and try to chat and get feedback that way I think that would take a very long time to get a great uh, to get a better exposure like exposure of course this is a the nuance of this situation is quite a bit different however it's similar in a in a great way like i'm still reading chat right i'm still reading text comments i can respond to them i can interact with them um and it's far more uh uh frequent it's far more frequent as opposed to writing thousands of comments and then seeing how that works out because honestly i'm pretty conservatively i can say pretty pretty conservatively that i think i'm the one that don't is not normalizing how people talk to each other these especially online where like when someone makes a comment and it's like some hyperbolic statement that somehow is placed with absurd certainty and then there's no like reservation to determining if that might be contextually appropriate or not when they're talking and stuff it seems like the natural rhythm of commentary and uh, demonstrating one's own credibility is way out of my uh, way out of my comfort zone at this point and the question is do i want to embrace that and at the moment after uh what is it almost four months now especially in language learning commentary i think i'm more resistant uh and wanting to create a different change like a different direction than the current direction i haven't really done that before it, it's been a while since i been the edge lord where i think i can affect affect uh affect like a direction in which people interact might be interesting i would love to collaborate with someone who has a bigger vision than me also the fact that you are in front of the camera and have an audience serve as a regular of goals you have set mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah indeed yeah i i like I like being able like that's a great thing actually that that's the reason why I want to do it this way um it's a con it's a way I can try to connect the audience um like get myself more grounded because I don't think you're I don't think a person is very good at eventually like I have a goal at some point I want to do it in a manner that i actually will consider applying for some sort of practice practice for executive function or something like that however without participating and experiencing and interacting with how people debate or discuss or overcome problems and whatnot i think that would limit someone's ability to be effective in those situations it's been a long time coming i i always wanted i had loved being in a mentor position academia just wasn't there and knowing that i'm five years out of academia and how crazy at least in the united states how 
strife oriented and politically inclined all, all that mess like all the current things are going on in the united states it's it's i've been following it tangentially but i i don't have any link ties to any of that stuff anymore it seems i like to think i hopefully fingers crossed right in two or three years it, it i i'm gonna be saying something different like oh yeah now like youtube or facebook and stuff have these things and these things and i could tell people about these things like someone would come up say you know it, it's really nice that um it's really nice that i i met you and whatnot and then i'm like hey 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 hold on hold on if you think some of the stuff that i say about interpersonal skills and like concern for yourself you can go to these resources which is like going to be extra available and change the direction of your life because i think the topic today the take-home topic today is really really i think language learning is incredible vehicle for this kind of thing um as well so it is really linked to language learning um some people I think one of the biggest barriers, why, what is it, how is this relevant to language learning? One of the biggest barriers is communicating with another person. Um, you could, I, I could sound completely incompetent, but I wouldn't be afraid to interact with someone. I, I can make mistakes, pronunciation mistakes, but I can make that other person feel comfortable and know that I'm earnest about it, as opposed to, someone who's constantly in the fear of being exact perfect or being ready to communicate with them i think the un one of the biggest underlying maybe unforeseen consequences of the digital age is the large aversion to communication in general like uh a lot of times when I hear someone say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm learning Japanese for a very long time now. Um, I just want to be prepared for it. And my question often I ask them indirectly a lot of times, like, how are you with interacting with people not learning language? Like, do you have lots of friends you hang out with, you discuss topics, learn from each other? And whatnot because honestly if you're not doing it that comfortably in your native language or your common language i think there's not much that will um, not much preparation that you can do in your target language that will promote that underlying skill development it's a great incentive though and i think that's where the conversation came from um, the intersection. What's a great way to get people excited for or get like kick themselves in the butt to motivate themselves to eventually find potential friends, like people you can first seek based on interest, then collectively learn together, learn a new language. I think that is a very provocative thing that even maybe the leading expert like maybe steven crossman uh, crushin can get behind where language learning can be uh interesting and unexpected honestly an unexpected catalyst and platform to keep in schools i'm speaking in the united states of course because the united states have this slow diminishing focus on developing another language and that in my opinion is an interesting counter argument to keeping language secondary language in schools especially one that in a country that is per incredibly predominantly monolingual from a pragmatic standpoint right so that in my opinion i can see a future in that where uh, for me anyways for me personally where i could leverage the aspects of language learning to get people excited about interacting with other human beings 
in the future there won't be Skynet, but there will be GPT crawling through your electronic footprint <laughs> to develop interpersonal skill development programs just for you. Oh boy. I, I did honestly for only $20. $21, yeah, per subscription. Um actually, um I saw the early moments of that. I think there are other services that are doing quite well. Like, uh, was it mental health, like better you or something? There, there's some ones going around where I hope it's not just AI. Like there, there's panels of professionals. And I think a lot of the teachers that maybe may not have the greatest time in academia, they could shift and pivot to a place of developmental skills with such services. So I don't necessarily think formal education is going to go anywhere in the like anytime they might reform. However, at the moment, you can see all the building blocks of skills. Um, I think there's so many. Um, one of my deep cuts here is I have no concerns about the level of difficulty of the language. I am more concerned that it's not even the language's difficulty that is stopping people from acquiring the language or like especially young enthusiastic and maybe even older people but generally young enthusiastic language learners um i have no problems just willy-nilly throwing out and plugging sentences together because largely i'm very comfortable in in my skin communicating with other people um, it, it might, you might be chalk it up to like multi being in a multicultural household or whatnot, man. Sometimes I think, uh, the people I talk to, they know so much about a language and yet when they talk to me, it's almost as though like I'm having the hardest time understanding them. And not in the sense of what they're literally saying, but more like they're not necessarily communicating their intent. And then like having this back and forth conversation regarding like, oh, I see what you mean. Is this what you mean? Like, oh, uh, let me let me try to describe it again. Like I, I can be overbearing at times, but like Kate, like Kate today. A cat today was trying to say something and I basically tried like two or three different ways to say oh you mean this like or this and then as we kept going I'm like continuing to like grow the perspective so that I understand where she's coming from and it didn't matter it didn't quite matter if we knew like all the jargon or whatnot that in my opinion cannot happen in a in like a YouTube comment you decide to write or the many many YouTube videos you watch probably not even the master class that you pay for right and I genuinely hope that there are at least two or three people in everyone's lives in which even if you don't even if they don't speak the, your target language you can be excited to share your discoveries with them. That's not quite ideal, obviously. However, you got to start somewhere. And I think so, ma um, so many wonderful language learners, right, are incredibly closed off in the last stage in language learning. They, they could be so proficient and I and being Asian, by the way, like, you know, being in an Asian household, the Asian culture does kind of prevent you from being very talkative in the first place. So it's already difficult that if you're interested in Chinese or Japanese or Korean and you're language learning, that means you're a foreigner, right? When you're a foreigner. It can still be a cultural barrier for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, especially Korean. Japanese comes second and then Chinese. Um, where 
culturally you don't get the opportunity to do that because you, they don't necessarily participate in pleasantries and so you gotta have a lot of interpersonal skills to navigate it yeah practice yeah practice is key and it's kind of sucks right now that i feel um people the practice is being superseded by fear and insecurity like there's this is gonna sound sappy but i don't think there's enough love and compassion in in one-way relationships there are too many one-way relationships one one-sided parasocial relationships um are not enough to promote like practice and compassion like uh there's so there's not necessarily cynicism there's not a plethora of distrust there is a plethora of lack of trust as in trust has not been consistently reinforced so it's so tough like i see people who like you you help think about jobs and then the first thing they talk about is like they list four or five things of the worst case scenarios i'm like i, I understand you're conscious about the worst case scenarios but you got to balance it out with what are the best case scenarios and also what would realistically happen uh without constantly practicing doing that you can rationalize out of anything and even your love for language learning will get superseded by your insecurities like how difficulty the perceived difficulty of a language is technically that can be informative but you never know you know the perceived ease of the language the perspective that when you're doing something easy or hard that comes up so much in language learning i don't understand that that one is a little tough whether it's hard or easy that's a that's a mixed bag because you have to really read the person to know whether that's good or not Yet, it's not about learning the language in order to use it. It's more like, what is the prestige that comes from it as well? Sharing or teaching a bit of the language you learn is practice too. Indeed. And anytime, anytime you get an opportunity, in my opinion, if you get an opportunity to share it, be able to express it accurately, no matter how little you have learned, it reinforces. It also demonstrates that you have acquired the knowledge. Whether you practice, and that leads to natural practicing and whatnot. So use whatever, engage in it. I, I don't, I don't think that can, that should be, that should be emphasized really rapidly. Like it's not a secret and it takes time, right? And it takes time. Seems like this is something that people who choose to do something, but never share it forever or never thought of. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that might be a thing too. Um, but anyways, I wanted to leave it on that note because I'm going to be doing this for the re like t tentatively. I have so many projects and plans that I can see where this is going. Perhaps one day we'll just write a story in a uh, write a like catharsis story or like a word of wisdom paragraph in both Chinese, Japanese and English. I could see this going so many places. So for now, I'll continue to do this this stuff and build up a basis. But man, I would love to see then I would love to be able to collaborate with other people because everyone is learning a different language. Like I met so many people with different languages. And that is a room for collaboration. I could even see maybe a year down the line will start a community project where I write, I don't know, I write a prose about how to overcome something, like overcome a fear of approaching someone. And then I want all the people that I meet over the next year, write their own version in their target language. Oh man, there's just so many different ways to like, I can think of so many different ways at the moment, but I don't have enough competency, right? I'm just not competent enough at the moment. And we'll see. Ah, like all these discussions are, I have so many ideas now from all these discussions. Anyways, 
we'll leave it on that be excited for the future right but always always try your best to keep your eyes on the present all your past experiences can be pushed into the present the things that are important to you integrate that what is important to me about chinese well everything i know about english everything i know about japanese now there are parts and it brings it constantly reinforces all the things that are important obviously the things that aren't are going to be forgotten but can be reminded right at any time later so keep that in mind and i hope everyone is continuing to learn have fun enjoy reach out network you know engage in interpersonal skills it doesn't even have to be like studying interpersonal skills practice is saying hi and trying to spark up a conversation whether with or without your target language so until next time right you're gonna watch this later you know and until next time stay safe stay healthy and i'll catch you guys on the next one